Last year, I sent out 54 million emails. I have a 48% open rate and I made $10.8 million from clicking an email button. Even like last year, I, I said it was the best year and the worst year of my life. No wonder I'm going through a divorce. You know, I told Shannon when we were first getting started, don't get in the way of me becoming a billionaire or I'll fucking leave you. That's how powerful my dream was. My fallout with Josh Altman. I can't tell you how many times I made a decision that I regretted later, you know, or I heard a relationship that I regretted later. Welcome back to another episode of the Austin Zayback Show. Today, we have a very special guest on. A lot of you guys uh, know who this is. If you don't know who it is, then uh, I don't know what to tell you, but we've got clever investor on the show, Cody Sperber. And uh, depending on how long you guys have been following myself or Cody, then you'll know that uh, we go way back. And, and uh, you know, Cody was one of my first mentors in wholesaling real estate. Uh, this is a guy who has probably wholesaled, I don't know, 10 or 15,000, maybe 20,000 homes. Billions, billions, billions of homes. <laughs> um, you know, he, he's one of the OGs, right? Like if you're if you're watching the video, you're watching the podcast, you know, I just encourage you to stay to the very end. You know, he, he's a guy who if you've ever wanted to get into real estate or wholesaling, uh, you know, this is obviously the guy. And uh, man, you've done a lot of other cool stuff. And I'm just excited to talk to you. And I appreciate you being here, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah. And I, I just want to start off by saying how proud of you I am come a long way dude walking through your office mm. right now i was like super proud i like, see that. all these people like just crank in deal flow mm. action all that young youthful energy and uh you're, you're winning i appreciate you that know, brother the fact that you're telling me like dude we already outgrew this space mm. and this is a dope space i'm really proud of you i appreciate it dude that it means the absolute world to me you know if anybody i've ever had on my podcast the compliment coming from you definitely hits hits home with me you know so um, you know, I appreciate that, man. I, I learned from you, you know, and, and I made a lot of mistakes along the way. Uh, I screwed up the culture. Let's, let's, let's talk about some of those, Austin. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm happy to talk about anything on the, I told Cody, you know, when we sat down here a minute ago, we as real and raw as we could be is how I want to do it, you know, but, uh, yeah, I made a lot of mistakes along the way. And, um, but those are what shaped me, you know, and, and, um, but I always admired you and, and I just remember, you know, going back to the, the good old days where, you know, I just looked up to you and what you had built and, I always just kind of strive to build a dope organization one day and and um, somehow I ended up here, you know. And you did it. Yeah. 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 Here That's we are. It. And this is just uh this is just the next step in your evolution. That's what's cool about it is is when you really think about it, you're not even thinking big enough yet. Which is wild. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really wild. Well, dude, um, you know, let, let's kind of dive in. I, I just for anybody that might be watching or listening that for some reason they don't know who you are, they've never heard of you. I, I doubt that that'll be the case, but um, you know, where are you from, you know, and, and, and what was your, what was your upbringing like and how did you end up in real estate of all things? Yeah. So 18 years in the game, uh, now I own a development company called Green Elephant Development. We're a for purpose development company. Um, what, what that means is we build a charitable component into the business model. So every single house we're, we're builders. Mm -hmm. Um, I got 23 specs going up right now, all in the 85018 zip code and also like uh, one other zip code across from the Valley Ho. I don't even know that zip code, but um, my business, my two best friends run the business. Um, I'm more like sexy eye candy. I bring a lot of money to the table and uh, a lot of, I make a lot of noise and uh, they're actually running the day-to-day -day operation. I think for me to, if anybody knew my life, like the multiple businesses I own, when you look at it, you're like, how do you do it? Well, it's like, I do it because I have great partners mm. in my life. And so my two best friends are my partners in that business. A portion of all of our proceeds goes towards elephant conservation. And we also try to mm. build with green building materials. So green elephant development. Wow. I I try not to start businesses nowadays that aren't for purpose. So they're not for, they're not for profit. They're not nonprofit, they're like right there in the middle. Mm. And I learned that concept from my good friend, Cole Hatter, who me and him partnered up on this event that he's been throwing called Thrive. And I learned about this for purpose concept. I'm like, man, that's so brilliant. I mean, I wanna make an embarrassing lot uh, amount of money, totally win on the money side of things, but I want it to do good at the same time. So like Tom's shoes, let's just build it right in, you know? And so the development company's crushing and it's crazy because develop, now in you know it's 2023 right now it's kind of a scary time to be mm. a builder like builders make gazillions on good times when interest rates go up like they are like it's very scary i'm floating over 40 million dollars mm. i you know every day we're fighting to keep our numbers in check like a good builder knows his numbers at any point in time goes upstream works to become vendors and you know works with their suppliers to to, to get better deals 
and builds for profit, not just to build a brand. Like we're really smart about how we spend our money. And thank God so far, out of every house I've ever built, I've only lost money on two of them. Wow. So thank God yeah. so far. And we we normally make like anywhere between 400 to 800,000. My, my biggest build I ever made 1.3 million in profit. So like Arizona's not like LA mm -hmm. and some other places where you can make, you know, crazy. Million, $5 million on a, on a build. Yeah. Uh, so we got that and then I got my wholesale division and we're wholesaling, you know, we were really killing it there last in the last few years i'm doing like 200 250 thousand a month in wholesale it's not our main business mm -hmm. just a little side hustle business um but we were doing really well we were consistent 200 250 in profit last june dropped to like twenty thousand over freaking night everybody and, oh it was like yeah and i and i was you know i'm being an educator uh i had been warning my team like hey this is coming this is coming but it happened so fast when the stock market pulled back and the hedge funds pulled out mm -hmm. and it was just like but thankfully, I have multiple streams of income, so we were able to weather that storm. And then uh, uh, we got our Airbnb division. I got multifamilies. I got over 50 luxury Airbnbs that are all cranking, run those like really well, all themed out. And out of those 23 houses I'm building, about seven of them are luxury Airbnbs that are going to be super pimp. Yeah. Um, and we're in Vegas. We're in here in, Scott, you know, mainly Scottsdale, Arizona, like the Phoenix metro area. And I'm building one in Park City right now, a ski in, ski out one. Oh, it's dang. gonna be really dope. And uh, so that's like, you know, and then I own my education businesses, software businesses, data companies. I own a network marketing company called OSnap that is at you know starting to scale right now. That's in the supplement space that we're we're just crushing it on ecom and, and network marketing. And so now it's like I kind of pinch myself. I'm speaking on stages. I'm writing books. I have my Rolodex is ridiculous. I run two high level masterminds that people pay anywhere between thirty five thousand to a hundred thousand dollars to be in. I know everybody, and I'm like, how the hell did I get here? I got here one day. My friend Jeremy showed up to a lunch meeting in a brand new car, and I'm like, dude, how did you get the car? And at the time, I had just got out of the military. I did not know what I wanted to do with my life. Really, I thought I wanted to be a history professor. I thought I maybe wanted to be a marine biologist, but I get violently seasick. Mm. And so when I joined the Navy from Arizona, I grew up in Mesa, Arizona. I didn't, I didn't know that I got seasick. And so, uh, you know, that marine biology went out the window. Mm. Nobody makes money. There are all these socialist, communist professors out there that are infecting our children. Mm. Uh, I went and met with a couple professors and I was talking to them about how much money they made and whether they love their job and none of them love their job and none of them were making money and they were all socialist morons. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna be a teacher. And uh, so I got lucky. Jeremy pulled up in this brand new car and I'm like, dude, how did you get the car? Mm -hmm. And he said, I flipped a house and I made 80 G's. And I went, you're full of shit. Am I allowed to cuss yeah, on this podcast? Uh -huh, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, you're good. All right, I said, you're full of it. There's no way you have no real estate license. You have no money. Like how you don't know anybody in real estate. And he goes, I know one guy. I know a mortgage guy. And he taught me this concept called wholesaling. And I said, what are you talking about? And he penciled it out on a freaking napkin, bro. <laughs> and I took the napkin from the lunch meeting and it spun in my head. This is 2002, 2003. There was no wholesaling courses. There was no Austin Zayback podcast or content that you put out teaching people this stuff. It did not exist. There was gurus, mainly in the own real estate category or the creative finance category. And uh, I just went, went on this mission to try and find it. No YouTube, nothing. Luckily, there was some gurus that had some of their other people teaching wholesaling. So I would just go buy these tickets, fly all over the country, go to these events to try and teach myself real estate investing. Mm -hmm. And I discovered pretty quickly, there's this whole crazy world that I was never exposed to. And it kind of pissed me off because mm. I was like, why, why, why don't I know about this? You know? Yeah. It's like, I have, I'm, I'm young. I got a lot of hustle in me. Mm -hmm. I used to sell drugs. This can't mm -hmm. be that much harder than Flipping, flipping weed, flipping yeah. houses. You'd flipping. already been wholesaling. I, yeah, I was already wholesaling weed. Uh, so it was just like, man, I think I can really get into this. And I love the idea. The richest guy in town that I had ever been exposed to is a guy named Michael Polak. Mm. 
And if you drive around the East Valley here in Arizona, he owns all the street corners, Polak Cinemas, Polak this, Polak that. He puts his name on the side. And I read this article when I was little. Hey, real quick, I just want you to do me a huge favor. If you're enjoying the show and you're enjoying all the amazing guests that we've been having on lately, then do me a massive favor and smash the like button, drop a comment down below and subscribe if you have not already. I would greatly appreciate it. It would mean the world to me and we will be able to bring on a lot more big names if you help us out. Now let's get back to the show. Um, in the newspaper, and he had this long, crazy kind of hair, and he kind of was like a Donald Trump type character, very eccentric, drove around in an RV, would pull up into a shopping center he wanted to buy, and he would just park and camp in the freaking parking lot until he got a hold of the homo uh, the, the building owner, out of state, in state, didn't matter, he'd get a hold of the building owner, and then work out a deal to buy the shopping complex. Oh my gosh. And I read this article, and I was like, whoa, well, I was... My family was really poor growing up, and we lived on this area of Baseline and Extension, which is this fairly cheaper area of Mesa, Arizona, heavily Hispanic. I was one of the only white kids there, and I used to have to walk to school because both my parents worked, and so I would walk three, four miles to school, which is fucking crazy that our kids are such wussies nowadays. Yeah. Like, if I don't drop them off right in yeah. front and, like, carry them into their class, <laughs> they're, like, crying. But I used to walk to school or ride my bike to school, and it was three, four miles, I'd pass by his building every day. And it said Polak Investments on the side of the building. And one day I finally, I was probably in seventh or eighth grade. I had the courage to finally walk in to the, and I asked the receptionist, could I see Polak? And she kind of laughed. She said, no, no, you know, nobody sees Paul. You don't just walk in and see Michael. He's very busy. I said, what do you guys do here? And she said, real estate investing. And it all started connecting that this was the guy who owned all these street corners. Mm -hmm. And that was the guy in the article. And like, I was like, okay planted a seed. Now, fast forward, I'm in the Navy. My dad hands me rich dad, poor dad, and says, read this. Just came out. Read that book while I was out in the ocean. Assets, liabilities, real estate, mm -hmm. plants a seed. Now here I am, lunch with Jeremy, flips a house, made 80K, another seed. And I call these pivotal moments, you know? It's like everybody has these moments in their life where you have an opportunity to recalibrate. You know, you have an opportunity to get exposed to something new, something bigger than the norm. And I'm, I'm flying all over the country trying to teach myself this business. The thing that people don't understand about real estate investing is in the beginning, it's very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It's like drinking from a fire hose. There, back then I was buying books and tapes and courses. Imagine binders, eight, you would get eight binders for $2,000, right? I'm oh, going yeah. in heavy debt trying yeah. to learn this business. I'd get this binder and it'd be like binder one, binder two, binder three. And it's like school, man, uh -huh. it fucking sucked. And yep. I'm reading it and in my logical man brain, I'm thinking it's like step one, do this, step two, do this, right. step three. It ain't fucking like that. <laughs> it's like, you gotta read it all, kind of absorb it, and then figure out w which order it actually goes in because the art of a deal and the life of a deal takes on a life of its own. Mm -hmm. No, How many deals have you done? Over 2,000, but I mean, we lost track at some point. Could you tell me two that were identical? Probably not. Yeah. I mean, there's similarities right. between them, but like, because there's people involved and pain involved and realtors and yeah. title companies and, and other wholesalers and competitors, they're like, there's no, it, whenever you're fighting for big money, mm -hmm. there's going to be lots of energy in that transaction. And sometimes it goes in your favor and sometimes you get screwed out of a yeah. deal. Big time. Well, it doesn't tell you that in the fucking book. The book doesn't teach you the art of influence and persuasion and negotiation. And and it just kind of, you know, it was kind of basic stuff. But I got overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Took nine months, bro. Never doing a deal. Wow. So when people bitch and moan, like, it's like they're like a month and a half in. And they're like, I haven't gotten rich yet. I'm like, you fucking pussy. What are you talking about? How is it possible that you're about to change your fucking life. You're about to get embarrassingly wealthy. If you just stay the fucking course, right. keep your head screwed on straight and figure out how to take all this information and build that scaffolding so you learn the language, but then really limit your vision so you're not trying to do 45 things at once. You just do one or two or three things over and over and over until you get to your first deal because that first deal is gonna change everything. So nine months I didn't do a deal. I quit the business because wow. I started listening to other people. And I allowed other people to steer my ship. And it happens to the best of us. 
I'm a one. I mean, I would say if I was looking in a mirror, I'm like I'm pretty fucking good. I'm confident. I'm good with people. Why? Why have I not done a deal? You know, and that little voice in your head gets really fucking loud when it goes month after month after month. You go from like I'm going to be real estate rich to can I really do this? Like, oh fuck, I look really young. Nobody's going to take me serious. I sound stupid. I'm. I don't know what I'm doing. My truck sucks. My clothes aren't nice enough. Like. Maybe my parents are right. Maybe I should just go back to college. And I quit wow. nine months in. And it took me about three months before I finally unquit <laughs> and then went to one more seminar. And that's when I met the probably the best piece of advice I can give anybody listening to this is find proximity to somebody who's really murdering it in the business and stop trying to find 45 teachers or listening to 45 yep. opinions and just find somebody that's winning and cozy up next to them at what whatever it costs. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met Lyle, my first mentor at, at this Jack Miller seminar. And that made a big difference because within two months after him taking me on as his mentee, I got my first deal. It's because he cut the noise out. He stopped me overthinking. He stopped me out there um, wasting time, doing things that I thought were important, but really didn't move the needle. And if, if we made a list, if I followed any person listening to this podcast around for a week and we just got out like a journal mm -hmm. and I said, page one, Monday, page two, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And we just tracked everything you did each day. And we just, whatever that was, brushed my teeth, dropped off laundry at the dry cleaning. 95% of those things are not needle moving activities. Maybe one or two per day is an actual money-making activity. Sure. And you wonder why people are so bad at time management and so bad at getting results. It's because we think making a logo for our business is a fucking money-making activity. Yep. Building the perfect website, saying the mm -hmm. perfect thing on social is a money. No, it's not. There's only a couple things. And it's getting out in front of a homeowner and fucking open up your mouth and try to build a relationship with this person and gather the information you can in order to maybe construct a deal. Sure. And it's you're kissing a lot of frogs before you find your prints. Oh, yeah. It, you got to be tough. You got to stay the course. You got to be consistent. And so finally I got that deal and it changed everything. And here I am now, 2000, I, I went off, did thousands of deals, right place, right time in Arizona with the foreclosure meltdown. I was able to like go down to the foreclosure auction and live that last crash through. Best experience of my life. I learned more in a two, three year period than I had in the previous probably 25 years. Mm. And uh, coming out of that, people were like, damn, dude, you're just absolutely killing it. I want to learn from you now. So it's like now I'm on the other end of it where people are paying me to learn. And I started Clever Investor in 2010, which is how I met you yeah. and became one of the largest education companies in the space. Yeah. Uh, and now here we are. Full circle. Full circle. It's crazy, you know? How does it feel to go from like reading Rich Dad Poor Dad to interviewing Robert. having them on yeah, my like stages was, and stuff was there yeah no it, it was it, look for anybody listening the impossible is possible when i got that book i didn't ever even my my brain wasn't even thinking big enough that someday i'm going to meet this guy someday i'm going to be this huge success i just um pinch myself when, when he was sitting in front of me and he looked at me and he said, Cody, I just want to tell you, I know Clever Investor. Mm. I watch your stuff. I'm really proud of you. Kind of like what I said to you. And he goes, dude, to, for now, for me to be on your stage, like I'm grateful to be on your stage and impact your team and your, and, and your audience. And I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, dude, your book got me in the fucking game. Right. How wild is that? But it's our obligation to be successful. It's our obligation to run the football further down the field. Mm -hmm. He wrote that book not knowing who it was going to impact, but it probably is single-handedly responsible for more people to get started in real estate than any other person alive. Mm -hmm. But those people, it's their obligation to pick up the football and run it further down the field. So I'm just doing my part, and you're doing your part. And I, I love that, you know, because there is a massive gap mm -hmm. between the wealthy and the poor. There is, I, I'm, I'm joking when I'm calling all the teachers socialists, but I'm not, yeah. you know, because it's like you look at the poor education in our, um, you know, traditional schooling system and 
they're not teaching a lot of th these things that we know mm -hmm. to actually move the needle in our businesses and nowadays, especially with social. And the fact that it's so antiquated mm -hmm. and poorly managed and poorly funded, it's like, I look at guys like Robert, I'm like, dude, this guy, a lot of people are like, oh, he's a kook. Mm -hmm. You know, he just is like a, a fear monger. Mm -hmm. I'm like, listen for the kernels of truth in what he's saying. The money is fake. Yep. The teachers are horrible. Not all of them, but the system is horrible. Mm -hmm. And it's they're, they're doing our, our kids a massive disservice. There just was an article the other day that came out that said the, the founder of TikTok won't even let his kids on TikTok. Mm. Wow. In, in China, TikTok is different. Yeah, way different. Here. You know, you know what they allow to go viral? Uh, math and engineering. And, and, yep. Here it's dumb, silly dances. Yep. They're just dumbing our fucking kids down mm -hmm. to being goofy wannabe influencers as if that's important. Yep. It's all rigged at the very it's top. Wild. It's wild, dude. Yeah, yeah, but he's not the first hero I met. And sometimes, you know, they say, you know, be careful mm -hmm. looking up to your heroes because sometimes you meet them and they let you down. Most of the people I looked up to turned out to be pretty good dudes. Mm. But there were definitely a few that, like, backstage, you're like, dude, you're a fucking clown. Yeah, like, you're not the guy. You're not the guy. Yeah. You're just a piece of shit. You're, it's all about the money. It's not about the impact. Mm. They don't, they don't really do what they say mm -hmm. on the stage. They don't live that life. And that's why it's really important to protect who you, you know, protect yourself from who you listen to and really choose your mentors wisely. Yeah. Because great salespeople don't necessarily make the best mm -hmm. influences in your life. Do you think those people last though? Like, do they last? Like, do they, the people that are, are like, let's call them like, they don't practice what they preach or they don't have good intentions. Like maybe they make a lot of money, but they're not, really doing it to impact the world at a high level like do they can they survive a long period of time i think so yeah you think so yeah unfortunately mm. yeah yeah because they understand the money game mm -hmm. they understand how to play it you know think about back in like the day with like kings and queens and courts there's mm. an art form to the courtship and p getting positions of power doesn't mean you're a good person. It just means you're good at the game. Right. You know, and uh, some it's wild people are, to think about. Yeah. Some people are really good at the game. And I'm just grateful to get exposure to a lot of these people because it makes me very thankful for the friends that I have surrounded myself with because they're legit badass motherfuckers. Yeah. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't reach out to them and tell them that or lean on them when I need them. Like that networking and building a Rolodex is probably one of the most important sports of yep. being an entrepreneur. And that's why I, the fastest person to cut a check, mm. you know, to put myself in a room, to get proximity. Mm. I don't look at money the same way as a lot of people do. I use money as a tool to go further faster. I, I use it to buy friends, mm -hmm. buy relationships, buy resources, okay. because I know I'm, I'm not the smartest guy. I'm not the best looking, I'm not the best dancer. I don't have any talent like i have to fucking play this game so aggressively in in whether it's my money or somebody else's money i want to spend it mm -hmm. i want to spend it i want to make a lot of it and i want to spend it as fast as i make it yeah so that way i can get myself and the people that i love proximity to winners mm -hmm. i learned all that from you by the way i learned like the art of networking and 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 you know do it like th all of this really i learned from you i mean if you if, if I really peel back the onion, you know, the, the concept of, you know, marketing and, and putting yourself out there and being omnipresent and just like trying to like, you know, make relationships and, and interview people was all things that I took from you, you know? So, uh, super cool to see all that come full circle too. Right. And how, um, how many people, Austin, want to get into real estate? They see a Cody Sperber webinar or an Austin thing or something. It's like, $500, get this course, and they buy it. And they're like sitting at the dinner table, and they're like, honey, I got this real estate course for $500. $500? You better return that. What are you doing? We don't have $500 to spend on that. And they fucking talk their significant other out yeah. of their dream. And I'm like, it's so fucked up and wild mm -hmm. to me. I'm just like, and and what's sad is people do. They, yeah. they, they, they recede. They play small, and they allow other people to steer their ship. And it drives me fucking nuts because I got to get on the phone with both of them and be like, listen, if you're worried about $500, you're already fucked. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the fact that you guys don't support each other, you're already fucked in your right. relationship. You know, it's like you have to get behind each other. 
I, I can't tell you how many people told me not to do real estate. My parents sat me down, looked me in the eye, my heroes, and said, Cody, you're making the biggest mistake of your life. Do not do it. Mm. Stay focused on school. This is month six or seven. Wild. By month nine, I quit. Mm -hmm. Month 14, I get my first 40K deal. A year later, I made $1.3 million in profit. A year after that, I retired my dad. Mm -hmm. I've been paying my parents hundreds of thousands of dollars a year ever since. Now, unfortunately, my mom passed away last year, but dude, the best feeling in the world is to win big enough to help out your family in that kind of way where your dad's now looking at you and saying, thank God you didn't listen to me. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. My wife percent. told me, go get a job. Yep. Dude, you should see her purse collection. Yeah. Her shoes, off the chain. Lululemon, Alo, everything. Mm -hmm. You think she, I could afford that on a, on a history professor's salary? If I would have played small and listened to all these idiots trying to steer my ship? Mm -hmm. So the point of that is don't listen. Follow your intuition, follow your gut, and just stay the fucking course. F use money as a tool so that way you can get the results, so you can make the impact. If I lined up, and sorry, I'm hijacking your no, fucking, you're I'm, good, I'm, I'm going, baby, let's go. go. Listen, let's line up 100 people yep. right now, 18 years old, mm -hmm. in a line, go down the line. Do, are you going to be successful? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be rich? Are you going to be healthy? Are you going to be, you know, um, somebody that makes an mm -hmm. impact? Yes, 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 100 fucking yeses. Go and interview all 100 people when they're 70 years old. Mm. How many of them fucking did it? One. One or two. Yep. Statistically, that's just the way it is. And out of that 100, probably one or two are going to be pedophiles yep. or in prison. <laughs> so yeah. it's like Reality. statistics are statistics. People take on, they allow all this bullshit in their lives to, you know, push them in different directions. Why is that, though? We all know the information's there. It's in the yeah. fucking palm of our hands. It's not like it, it, it's not like back in the day where mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. Right. So what is it? People want to be comfortable. I mean, I I don't know. I've interviewed fifty. You're the fifty fifth person I think I've had on this particular podcast. I think I think a society people want to do what's comfortable to them. I think. Like if I can really get to the bottom of it, right? It's just the easy thing to do, whether that be like not go to the gym, sleep in, don't do the cold plunge, don't do the sauna. Like it's just doing the familiar, doing the comfortable. People don't want to venture out and do the uncomfortable. We just, I, it, that's my thought on it. So like complacency kills complacency. progress? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I mean, there's- One of the reasons, right? For sure. I mean, there's a lot of reasons, but you just, you look at it and you're like, for me, what are, you know, like you have certain- things you're born with, yep. a certain environment that you're around. Your success wasn't determined by your environment, mm -mm. right? Not at all. Like you got exposed to something, mm -hmm. you obsessed over it, and you just never fucking quit. And you just stayed the course. Mm -hmm. I've watched you grow, dude. You've had many setbacks. Mm -hmm. Me and you fucking had a falling out. Yeah. We totally, I, I told you to go fuck yourself yeah. on social media. Yep. You know, we could talk about that, um, you yeah, know, and, yeah. and and you made it right. Yep. You know, and look at us and now we're cool. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many no's I've had, how many mm -hmm. times I've been sued, how many failures, how many fucking times I've been pushed around, bullied, beaten up, sidelined, mm -hmm. laughed at, like thousands. I, I don't even know, yeah. you know? So it's your environment, as bad as it is, can be your greatest asset. It can. You know, mm -hmm. your natural abilities could be your biggest hindrance or your biggest asset. But it's really just the fucking six inches of real estate between your ears. It's inputs and outputs. Mm -hmm. If I have a bunch of negative shit happening in my life all day long, and that's all I'm focusing on, right? I'm listening to negative news. I'm I'm, I'm one of these keyboard jockeys on social media, just talking mad shit about everybody else, but don't do anything myself, yep. right? I'm, I'm a spectator of the game. I'm not a player in the game, and I don't own the game. I'm a spectator, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a commenter. And I have all this negative shit and I'm, I'm, and I'm surrounded by all these other negative people because I never fired all my loser mm -hmm. friends. Yep. Of course, I'm going to be a product of that. Right. Of course, I'm going to, my output's going to be comparable to my inputs. But if I fire all my loser friends and I fucking become a voracious self-learner mm -hmm. and I put myself and I use money as a tool to put myself in powerful circles where I'm exposed to next level mm -hmm. thinking, my underdog status, the pain, the fucking struggle is the fuel yep. to go out there and dominate and become obsessed over something. And here's the last thing I want to say about that. So how many people do you know chase after their fucking dreams because they like to play guitar? They like 
to coach mm -hmm. sports. They liked, and then they never make any fucking money. Yeah, you know, typically your passion ain't going to pay you. Exactly. Nine times out of ten. You're going to be the broke friggin' guitarist on the corner trying to make a living. Like, you got to do you got to do the thing that makes you money and then take the money and do what you're passionate about. And you can't be. In my opinion, right? Like, you. 100. Very rarely. Like, the Justin Bieber of the world. Maybe. You get yeah. one in a million, Not dude, saying like, you can't do it. Right. I'm just saying, why do it? Mm -hmm. If you have to work for 40, 50 years in order to get to a point in life where you're comfortable and secure. Yeah, you want to do it doing something that you enjoy. You don't want to hate it. Yep. However, you're if you're in the wrong money-making vehicle, you're going to work really hard and never ever get there. For sure. The average American makes about 65k a year on average, okay? Look it up. And unfortunately, they're fucking horrible savers. Right. And with taxes and inflation, you cannot save your way out of that rat race. And what ends up happening yep. is people might, might save $1,000 a year. By the time they hit retirement age, what do you think, like, the average person that's hitting retirement age saves? 80 grand, 100 grand. I mean, dude, I, I, dude, you're talking, be... you're talking super saver status. Yeah, like, I'm talking, like, they're balling out. 95,000 is like, I'm a fucking great really? saver. Wow. 95K. Dude, how are you going to learn live for 20 years, 25 years, with and the 95 k is not worth any money by the time you're that age. No, it's, dude, it's, it's a it's a joke, and so they're dependent on the government, and they're dependent on their family, and they're a burden to everybody around them. Right, they're stuck in the system because they were in the wrong money making vehicle. They were hard workers, they were good people, but they never played the money mm -hmm. game to win. And so, to comfortably retire, you need about 3.5 million liquid. Yep, and that's that's if you want to make ten thousand dollars a month for, for 20, 20 years. years. Got it. Okay. 99% of people listening to this will never save $3.5 million. Cash. Uh, We're talking Unless they liquid. do one of two things or two, two of these three things because most people try to work their way to wealth. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Taxes, inflation, the game is rigged against you. You're not even in the game. You are in the earned income bucket. So this is why I loved Rich Dad Poor Dad because mm -hmm. it, was, it was sounding the... The warning on, look, if you're an employee, you cannot get there because of taxes, inflation, and the game is rigged against you. But if you shift over to becoming an entrepreneur, at least you're in the game and you can master leverage, right? Leverage is the key to building wealth. That's it. It's like a simple concept that people don't understand. It's like, I need to leverage, I need to go get 25 Austins. I walk through your, your office. How many people you have out there? Well, we, uh, probably today when you walk through oh, 50, I mean, 50 yep. people hustling the energy in there was crazy. I could feel the fucking money coming in this office. They're winning. You're winning because you learned how to leverage. You had such clarity on your vision that you were able to enroll somebody else that had that energy to go out there and kick ass and, and let's call them entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to start a business. They wanted to hitch their flag to somebody who had something already, the infrastructure already, but they had to find that alignment with you. Mm -hmm. And you had the enthusiasm, the clarity, and the ability to transfer, I call it enrolling, mm -hmm. to enroll 50 people out there to say, get in here. Mm -hmm. We're going to dominate together. And now they're out there, and they're yeah. going to win, and you're going to win even bigger because you are leveraging 50 people's energy now. At the same time, money, skills, talent, resources, connections, you now have 50, maybe, I don't know how many total people you have. 75. Okay, yeah. so you have 75 relationships that you can leverage mm -hmm. for so many different ways. You have the ability to sell this business at some point and get a big fat payday. I have no doubt in my mind, you're gonna crush the 3.5 million, no doubt. Now, the other way to do it is through investing your way there. Mm -hmm. This is why understanding taxes, which is the boringest of all fucking topics, and this is why I love real estate, First off, leverage, I can go buy a million dollars worth of real estate for 200 grand, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Because the banks, which is kind of funny. 20% down, the banks. All these, all these banks are crashing right now. Yeah, it's right, kind of funny, right. you know. If you've ever wanted to get into wholesaling real estate and you want to learn how to flip contracts and wholesale, right? Maybe you're brand new, maybe you've never wholesaled a deal, or maybe you're even doing a couple of deals a month right 
now, but you want to learn how to do more, instead of joining my coaching program or somebody else's coaching program, we're actually looking to hire. So go ahead and message me 480-418-5339 and send me a text message opportunity. Okay, so if you want to work with me, you want to work with my incredible team, you want all of our leads, you want all of our systems, all of our processes, everything, right? And I've done about 2,000 wholesale deals in my career, then go ahead, shoot me a text, 480-418-5339, and message me, opportunity, and look, especially if you're in my state, okay, the state of Arizona. If you live in Arizona and you want to get into wholesaling, this especially is an opportunity for you because you can come sit right in this office with my entire team and be a part of one of the biggest wholesaling companies in the country. I look forward to talking to you. Uh, through hypothecation and factoring, they can lend out money that doesn't even fucking exist to guys like me. <laughs> uh, to go buy real estate <laughs> right. so I can win the money game. Which is wild because then you own 100% of the asset for only 20, and you only had to pay. You're basically buying real estate. If you really think about it, assuming you hold it for 30 years, right? You're buying real estate with for tw 20 cents on the dollar because the tenant is going to pay your the yes. other 80%. It's, 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 it's the most brilliant wealth building thing that you can do. Go buy a million dollars worth of real estate for 200 grand. But Cody, I don't have 200 grand. Go borrow it. You can literally borrow, you can use other people's money for the entire thing, right? Convince the seller to sell or finance you. There is over, oh, what was this stat? 50 billion? Oh man, I don't want to screw this up. Yeah. I just looked it up the other day. How much free and clear real estate is, uh, it was like, it was like something crazy, like 37%. Yeah of all property in the United States is owned free and clear. Wow. It was such a staggering number. I was like, you double took. You're oh like, my gosh. I'm like, though, those, if interest rates are at 8%, mm -hmm. why would I ever go get an 8% loan to buy real estate? Yep. I'd rather just go find somebody who owns a building free and clear that's over it mm -hmm. and say, look, dude, you be my bank. You seller finance me. I'll give you 5% yep. interest on, and you carry back the paper. 37% of all property is free and clear. It's easy to find that data. Yep. So it's like there, money is not the excuse, but you can, you can use leverage to buy a lot more real estate with li very little money. And you can't do that. or It's hard to do that in other investment vehicles like stocks, yep. bonds, like no, nobody's, I mean, gold. If I want to buy a stock, I got to buy a hundred dollars. If I want to buy a hundred dollars stock, it, it costs me a hundred dollars. It's harder to do it. Right? Like you have I mean, to be like a gangster trader with yep. like a really great margin account or something. But and the tax benefits of real estate allow you to write off. Like, so last year I bought a building, okay? I, I made more money last year than I've ever made. Like, it was a beautiful year financially. Horrible year personally. Yep. Like, it horrible. Which I want to talk about in a little oh, while. Yeah. Fuck. You're going to make me go, go there. We have to in a little bit. Uh, yeah. But it's just like, uh, when you make a lot of money, the goal is like, you have to always ask yourself at the beginning of the year, what's my goal this year? Is it to scale and make more money or keep more of the money I have or do both? Sure. It's kind of fun to do both, right? Well, how do you do both? Own real estate, mm -hmm. own commercial real estate specifically. And there's something out there called a so cost segregation study. Mm -hmm. And you want to look this up if you've never heard that before. Understand cost seg studies and understand depreciation. So I went and bought a $5 million building, a $4.5 million building, and then I put a bunch of money into it. And um, then I got tenants in there, which pay for the cost of the building, right? So I'm basically running my companies out of a building that my tenants pay for. Right. Beautiful building, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, and then I did a cost seg study, accelerated the depreciation, and used that accelerated depreciation write-off along with all of my other expense write-off for building out the building and finishing it to offset millions of dollars worth of my earned income. I evaporated over a million dollars worth of taxes. Right. From one purchase. Incredible. And I still own the building. And my tenants are paying it down. Yeah. And at the end of it, let's let's say I hold it for 10 years. What do you think I'm going to do? Refi. Uh, okay, let's just, let's, let's, let's run with that. Yep. Let's say 10 years in, I've now paid off whatever, half the building. 1031. Yep, yep, you're 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 going exactly where I want. So now, ten years in, I want to make money, right? And I'm like, you know, but I don't want to sell my building. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go pull out a loan against my building, which is tax free, yeah, because it's debt. Yep. 
And once I understood this, it was like, oh shit, this is how the rich keep getting richer because I could use that debt to go buy more buildings, mm -hmm. right? And keep the ball rolling forward. Then I hold it for another five years and I get over it. And I'm like, you know what? Somebody offered me 7 million for the building. Mm -hmm. And I only owe three at the time or four. I'm like, I'm gonna make a bunch of money. When I sell it, instead of taking my profit, I'm gonna 1031 it into even a better building. Yep. And I'm gonna, uh, now I have more buying power because I wasn't taxed for owning the building, mm. cashing out of it. This is how real wealth is created. Now I'm in the money game. So if you're not building a business, yep. if you're not investing, or like you, you're building a business that does investing, which is like the deadly combo of really going further faster. You're gonna always have more month at the end of the money. You're gonna always have your hand out and be one of those 99 out of the 100 that you're 65, 70 years old, you have maybe 75, 80,000 saved, you might have 100 grand in equity mm -hmm. in your little house. Your medical bills, yep. your golden years. You're screwed. It's, it's, it's not gonna be so golden. Yeah. You know? I wanna talk more about, there's so many things I wanna dive into, but you said something a little while ago when we were talking about passion and we were talking about, you know, and I, and I had mentioned like going and, and, and start, uh, doing what makes money and then taking the money and doing what you're passionate about, right? And you were like, we, we kind of agreed and we talked about it a little bit, but can't you also, like when, when I first tried beer, I didn't like beer, right? It was an acquired taste. I learned to like beer because when I was a little kid, I wanted to like beer because all the old people drank beer and I thought it was cool, right? So I, I made up my mind that I wanted to like what I didn't like and I eventually ended up liking it, right? Same with scotch or a cigar or whatever, right? The cold plunge, I do the cold plunge now. I <laughs> yeah. hated the cold plunge yeah. the first time I did it. Like the first hundred times I did it, I think I absolutely hated it. And I think I still hate it to a degree, but I've learned to love it, right? Like I've, mm -hmm. I've trained my brain to, to like doing it, right? So we talked about passion a little while ago can't people just apply that same concept to whatever it is that makes money? Like it might 100%. be- 100%. I know a lot of people that are very successful in real estate that don't give two shits about real estate. They, but they see the power of the money-making mm -hmm. vehicle that they're in. Yep. They don't, I'm weird. I'm like a fucking anomaly, dude. I'm the house whisperer. I like, like oh, I, I really like this architecture. Oh man, yeah. I'm gonna make a lot of money uh, from you. Uh, that, it's like Zillow's like my house porn. Right. Uh, but that's not normal, you know. It's it's it, it doesn't matter if you're in love with it. That I I would rather play the money game to win, to free up my time so I can regain control and go teach guitar, which is my real passion, but not have to make money from my passion. Because when you make money from your passion, it's a job and it it loses its passion. You lose yeah. it loses its shine. Yeah. But if I get to go teach kids guitar because that's what I really want to do, and I don't have to make money at, from it at all. I just get to do because I love it. What a great life. Yep. But you only can unlock that freedom through winning the money game. That's it. Is wholesaling the thing that if you were watching right now, obviously now you own a development company and you, you got the Airbnbs and you've gotten, I, I see a lot of people talking about Airbnb arbitrage and you see people talking about wholesaling. You see people talking about go be a real mm -hmm. estate agent, right? Like if you're brand new and obviously you do a ton of stuff, where would you start if you if you could only pick one thing? Is it still wholesaling? You know what I love about wholesaling, Austin, is it, it's the gateway that teaches you and, and exposes you to so many other types of investing. And I, I like people to get started there because you got you got to master certain skills, right? First off, you're forced to become a great networker, okay? So you want to meet people in this industry anyway. It forces you to learn the language of creative real estate. As you're learning and being exposed to wholesaling, you'll, you start to realize like, man, I get told no a lot. What are other ways to get yeses? And so now you start getting exposed to creative deal structuring, like subject to transactions and wraparound mortgages and seller finance deals. And at the same time, you're flipping properties to people who are doing something with them. And you're being exposed to rehabbing and builders and landlords. And eventually you're gonna find your path. You're gonna you're gonna wholesale. First off, wholesaling is fucking tough. It's a hard business. It's not. You don't do a weekend seminar and go become a su successful wholesaler. It takes time and a lot of hustle to really get it together. Doesn't I've had a lady. I swear to God, I could not fucking believe it. I was almost mad. She paid me a lot of money to be a mentoring student. She lived in like Barbados or something, and she English was her second language. And she goes. 
you know, Cody, where do I start? And I said, you're going to call, this is back in the day. I said, you're going to call Craigslist leads and you're going to warm up. We're just going to get the marbles out of our mouth and we're going to get told no. And we're going to get told to fuck off. And we're going to do all the fun things to get it out of our system. And at the end of the day, we're going to re-meet and we're going to see your experience. This fucking lady gets a $50,000 deal on her first phone call. <laughs> Closes it a week and a half, two weeks later and gets a check for 50 G's. She's like, I should have been doing this my whole life. This is easy. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, I, I got to break the news to you. You might never do another deal again. Yeah. It might take you six months to get a second deal. Like you got lucky, but you got lucky because we made the calls. Mm -hmm. We put ourselves in the game. And sure shit, it took her a while to get her next deal. She eventually got it because she already had faith. She knew that she could do it. It just, she just had to keep repeating. The, I call it mastering the mundane. Yeah. You have to just repeat that lame ass process a gazillion times so you finally stumble into another deal. But I like, I like wholesaling because it exposes you to all those things. You quickly realize that it's a young man's sport. Nobody wants to be a 75-year-old wholesaler. I still wholesale, not as the main business, sure. though. It's more like we're out... My goal is to become a real estate expert. So I don't really call myself a wholesaler. I'm an expert. I know how to do all of it. And I've spent years trying to master all these skills, but I started with wholesaling because yep. you can get in with very little resources. You get to meet some of the most amazing, wonderful people and some of the most cutthroat pieces of shit like any business, but you quickly gate, you learn how to read people. You learn sales skills, influence skills, persuasion skills. You're forced to master your paperwork. Big time. I love the I love that because I am not a paperwork guy. <laughs> I am a, can we just write it on a napkin and shove this thing to the finish line? But you quickly realize this is where big money is, there's big conflict. Mm -hmm. And a bunch, bunch of people that want to take your money from you. And so you got to really dial in your paperwork. And through that experience, you can literally do anything. You can jump to Airbnbs, you can jump to multifamily. It's not a far jump once you have already mastered and learned the language of creative real estate. Sure. So that's it. So I yes, I would say go for it. Yep. Absolutely. Now, if you rolled up and you were like, hey, I inherited $25 million, I'd be like, fuck wholesaling. We're Don't not, get into wholesaling. We're not doing that. No. Yeah, yeah. no, we're, we're jumping right into apartments. Yep. So if you're wholesaling then to be to make sure I'm understanding, and, and they are, if if you're you don't have a ton of money, you're brand new to real estate. Like you're just trying to make something for yourself. Like you want to create a future that's brighter than where you're at now. Like wholesaling's it, right? Great side hustle business. Yep. And look, with powerful technology nowadays, you can wholesale anywhere. Sure. It's not like back in the day. Not even when I, compared to when I got in, it's totally different. Oh, totally different. Wild. Dude, dude, I have AI technology, lead scoring every homeowner in the United States that pinpoint, it cuts my lead cost down by 50%. It pinpoints exactly which markets I should be focusing on. I use the same technology that the hedge funds use. Right. You know, and AI is kind of a hot thing right now. I've been using it for two years. Mm -hmm. You know, so Nobody cool. even yeah. knew that I was like slaying deals <laughs> using AI. Yeah. But I can do stuff remotely in a bunch of different states. Some people live in San Francisco, New York, and they're like, fuck, I'm never going to be able to wholesale. Sure as shit you are. 100%. Why can't you do a wholesale deal in Tennessee? You could travel the world and wholesale. That's like, it. There's these travelers I see that just travel and like just wholesale. Yep. And if, dude, if uh, you make 15 grand per deal, which is a pretty normal wholesale deal nowadays, how many do you need to really be free? 10 a year and you're free. I mean, you're, technically. Yeah. I mean, uh, most if, people. Depending on the lifestyle you live. You live in live, Bali, right? you make 100 Gs remotely, 150 Gs remotely. You surf you. every day. You yeah. love life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and and we can co-wholesale. That's what else is cool. I'll find a deal. Austin has a buyer. I call you up. Hey, dude, I got this deal. You're like, dude, I got a buyer for that. We partner up. You bring the buyer. I bring the deal. We split the wholesale fee 50-50. I make 7,500. You make 7,500. Takes me an hour and a half's worth of work total to yeah. put the whole deal together. Where I've else been, can you do that? Nowhere. I mean, very few places very few on planet places. Earth. I mean, there, there's a handful of industries that you can do that, but I can't think of any other w industries that I'd rather be in, uh, honestly. I mean, there's like, mm -hmm. what are you going to go do? Health insurance? I mean, insurance, life insurance? I mean, in multi-level marketing, very few places have that low of a barrier of entry with that much upside potential, right? Now, I will say this. One of my first questions to anybody I'm mentoring that wants to get into wholesaling, my very first question is, how are we going to fire ourselves from wholesaling? Mm. 
I love that. It's an interesting thought. And they're like, dude, I'm just paying you to get into the game. And it's like, I hear you, but you got to own real estate to be a real estate investor. Mm -hmm. Wholesaling's not investing. Wholesaling's flipping paperwork. It's a job. Yep. You stop working, you stop earning. Now, you might be able to start a real wholesale business mm -hmm. and scale it like Austin Zabak, who has <laughs> 35 wholesalers wholesaling yeah. for him. So he's not on the front lines anymore. I'm not, I'm not calling sellers. No. I'm not going to appointments. I don't do anything. And I make, you know, we're probably at like a hundred to 150,000 a month right now. Back up a little we're bit. We're back yeah. up to about a hundred, 150,000 yep. a month. Yeah. This month was a better month because we had a 70 K deal and an 85 K okay. deal. So we, we popped more than normal. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, I mean, where else can you do a 85k wholesale deal? Right. I mean, and it and it it's not like I wake up in the morning and go, dude, I'm gonna go find a big deal today. It just fell into our yep. laps because we're constantly marketing. Yep. And that brings me to my next thing, real fast before we move on to the next topic. People know who I am because I'm loud, right? Like my value to the partnership. I, I was joking and been like, oh, I'm just sexy eye candy. I'm loud. I'm, I have been building a personal brand for many years. Yep. I put out content every single day, every single week. I am filming new content. People know who I am. I, I, there's a call to action at the end of all my videos, right? Telling them what to do next. Go to my website, download this free ebook, send me deals, something. I'm always marketing and branding. Yep. If you want to be successful in the real estate business, you have to get out of your own way. I, have you ever listened to your voice on a voicemail and go, God, do I sound like that? Yeah. I sound like a little girl. Like, what the, hell, what the hell's the matter with me? Why do I sound like a, a teenage girl going through puberty? I can't tell you how many times I filmed a video and deleted it without even watching it because I was embarrassed and I had these self-limiting beliefs that said I wasn't good enough. People weren't, weren't going to make fun of me. And sometimes I posted and they did, especially in the beginning. Thank God I stayed the course. Thank God I put out content. I wouldn't have the money or the impact that I have if I didn't build a personal brand. And it's easier now than ever. You can with AI technology. I can go into chat GPT, say, write me a one minute script on top three reasons to invest in Scottsdale, Arizona for my IG. And it will write you a perfectly scripted, and maybe you have to modify it a little bit, but it'll give you the top three tips to invest in Scottsdale, Arizona. And you can use an app like Big View, B-I-G-V-U, which is a teleprompter app on your phone. And you can literally hold your phone up, upload the script into it, hit record, stand outside, read the freaking words that mm -hmm. the AI technology wrote for you, record it, hit one export button that says add captions and within three minutes you now have a perfectly scripted professional looking reel that you can post on your ig with a call to action at the end that if you're interested in local investing deals here in scottsdale arizona give me a call i'm cody sperber here's my number or go to my website here's my website or join my buyers list here's my buyers wow. list link there is no excuses for people not to be building a brand and that's the one thing I encourage everybody who's getting in this space to do. You should put out a minimum of three to five videos every day of the week, wow. 90 days straight and build that freaking muscle, that branding muscle. And in the beginning, it's awkward and you're going to sound stupid and you're going to stumble and you're going to suck at reading a teleprompter and you're going to hate your voice. But if you just post it, it's quantity, not quality when it comes to personal branding in the beginning. And I promise you, 90 days later, you'll be comfortable, confident. You'll get really good at creating the right type of content because you'll figure out what doesn't get any engagement and what does. People, all the haters will hate and then eventually unfollow and go away. The, your tribe will start to gravitate towards you. You'll start to build your list. And what I realized, um, Austin, is that in all my businesses, as a direct response marketer and a brander and all that, my business is really email. Wow. My business is really email and texting. I make an insane amount of money enrolling people into my offers. Mm -hmm. So if you look at me online, I'm putting out all this content. I, I have my own podcast, The yep. Clever Investor Show. And I'm, do, I'm out there putting out all this content. 
in the hopes that somebody gravitates off of that platform into my email list. Through a free offer. Through a free offer, through a free something, free show notes, free download, free help, free courses, free money, free whatever. Just get onto my email list. And anybody who's on my email list knows that I fucking email my email list. I'm on it. Dude, every day of the week, I write my own copy. I became an expert copywriter. I had to teach myself direct response marketing. I know how to build funnels. I sold over $100 million online so far. Yep. Direct response. I'm surprised it's not more now. I mean, I don't know. And yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, I'm not nearly as big as I used to be, uh, but because I'm running other companies and stuff. But last year, I sent out 54 million emails. Wow. I have a 48% open rate and I made $10.8 million from clicking an email button. I don't know very many people that can't really whoop ass in life with $10.8 million from the comfort of their own home. I could have not even put on my fucking pants. Yeah and made $10.8 million, and that's a side business. That's one of my companies. And I'm not saying that to brag, I'm saying that to, the, I had to learn this. I was like, I woke up one day and I'm like, God, I need to be even more crazy with my personal brand. I gotta be even more loud. And with now chat GPT, you can create, like I could create a reel around the uh, SVB bank collapse mm-hmm. in real time. I, I don't that. need an editor. We did that yesterday. Dude, and right away it's, trending content and at the end of it people are gonna be like who the hell is this austin guy like i i put out a, a clip with uh from robert kiyosaki on my podcast it's going viral right now we got over two million views and it's just kind of going i bet you all end up at four or five million views i had over seven thousand people follow me because of that one clip and i've already had two or three people reach out and say hey i want to get involved in your real estate deals where can I, like, can I give you money? Can I lend you money? And I said, yeah, go to Clever Capital Fund. Like, I was like, just promoting, right? Yeah. All from one little one minute clip of Robert Kiyosaki talking shit about Joe Biden. <laughs> and it's like, it only takes one of your clips to finally light up and your whole brand elevates. Mm. And all these new people get exposed to you. And your money making capabilities, your impact capabilities just skyrocket. Yeah. But nobody, money doesn't gravitate towards a negative space in the universe. It doesn't go to a quiet place. But the steps, are just, and I, I'm curious to hear your thought on this. If, if somebody's watching, the steps, to, you have to become great at one thing, I would imagine, right? And then do you simultaneously get good at, at social media and then create education around the thing that you got great at? Like, what is the order I'm in only, which- I would never encourage anybody to do education unless they were passionate about teaching. Okay. I love to teach. I wanted to be a teacher growing up. So I'm, I, that's my thing, you know? I love taking complex things. It's one of my superpowers to take a complex concept, simplify it, make it fun to learn. Mm. And I'm also um, self-deprecating. Yeah. I make fun of myself a lot. Like, I'm not that guy that's like, look at me, I'm fucking the best. I, so I know some people that are like that, you know, that, that, that that's their style. That's not my style. My style is more like make fun of myself, mm-hmm. but that's why people like me and they, they, you know, I like this guy, he's killing it, but he's also approachable. And so I, I wouldn't say the education part, but I would say if I'm just, even if I'm brand new in wholesaling, start building your brand now, mm-hmm. because look, you might not know shit about wholesaling, go to chat GPT <laughs> and put, write me a one minute script on how wholesaling works. You now sound like an expert in wholesaling. Look, the fake it till you make it thing, the thing that bothers me about that is when you're inauthentic. Mm. That doesn't mean that you're a mis... I, I, I faked it till I made it. I remember standing in a circle. Everybody was talking about a short sale. I had never heard of what a short sale was before, and I'm pretending like I know. And they go, well, who do you close short sales with? And I'm like, all over the place. <laughs> Where do you go? I go to so-and-so, I'm like, oh, that sounds great. I, I, I'll try that out. Yeah. No clue what the fuck they were talking about. Go away, research short sales. How do I, how do I teach myself about short sales? I write a blog post. Back in the day, we blogged. Mm-hmm. I wrote a blog post about how short sales work. I taught myself by researching and writing a paper about short sales. I posted it on a blog. I, this is pre-social. I forget about it. Now, years later, the foreclosure crisis happens in Arizona. What happens to that blog post? Goes to number one on Google wow. in Arizona. How to short sale a house in Arizona was the title of my blog. Wow. Guess what I got? A lot of freaking people. Tens of thousands yeah. of leads overnight. 
It started as a trickle and it became a flood. Guess what? I'm in the short sale business. <laughs> I'm in the loan mod business. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Mm -hmm. It just, I understood the power of the brand and creating content. Yeah. So where I have a problem with fake it till you make it is when you're an inauthentic piece of shit and you're stealing other people's words mm. and you're stealing their style and you're trying to be something that you're not. Mm -hmm. And that's, and I had a problem with you with that in the mm -hmm. beginning. I, I love everything you're doing now because it's you. Yeah. You're finally there, dude. Like you're, uh, like you're confident and you're authentically you. For a while, you were trying to be the in front of the Range Rover guy, mm -hmm. the, the cool young money guy, the I got 50 billion businesses and all this shit, but yeah. behind the scenes, you really knew like it wasn't where you wanted them to be. Yep. You wanted to be a Grant Cardone. Not Grant, but you wanted sure, to be like yeah. a Grant Cardone. Yep. And a lot of people made this mistake. And I would always tell you, dude, you're better than that. Yep. You could be better than that. Just be you. And now I love your content. I engage with your, I want to see your content because it's real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So and I, okay. I took a big step back for a long time and I just built the companies, you know, because I you knew. did the real fucking business. I had to do it, right? I'm like, dude, yeah. I got to go for it. I mean, and not that like we didn't have make money before, but I, I knew I had to go make real money, like big boy money, right? before I really could play the, if I, if I ever wanted to play the social media game and be authentic, like you're talking about, I had to figure out what the hell I, who, who am I and, and what is my voice? And I think I'm still figuring it out. I don't, I don't think I fully know all the answers to those questions yet. I think that I'm on the journey of figuring it out, right? I don't think I'll ever know, but I, I try every day to be authentic. And, but again, I looked at, I watched a lot of your stuff, dude. And I watched your evolution over time. You, you're a totally different human being, by the way, now than you even were a couple of years ago. I mean, like you've, and you were an awesome guy then, but you're an even more awesome guy now, you know, and, um, and that's admir admirable as all hell, you know, I mean, I, 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 had, I strive to, cause I, I never stopped watching you, you know, even the couple of years. Even though I blocked you, you figured out how to I, watch me? A hundred percent, you know, <laughs> yeah, dude, you just blocked one account. I mean, come yeah. on now, you know, uh, it wasn't that hard to keep watching your content, you know, so really, really cool to see though, dude. Yeah. yeah thank you. Let's talk about that real fast. Yeah, for sure. Come on, yeah. Austin. Let's, let's, let's it, air out the dirty laundry. Yeah. Let's make this podcast clip go viral. I love it, dude. I love it. Um, First yeah, off, like anybody confronting listening. Confronting Cody, you know what I mean? We'll hey, do. hey, can we give Austin Zayback five stars for his podcast right now, please? Just hook this guy up. He that. he's only got a bunch of four star reviews. Like, let's fucking step our game up and get some five stars for this yeah, man. Yeah, I appreciate that, bro. It means the world. Yeah, dude. Um, no, I mean, I think I just you you go through life and you make mistakes and you do different things and you burn bridges and and you try not to. Obviously, it's not the intent, right? When you we, you're not like born and then you think like, oh man, I'm going to go try to screw this up as much as I can. I mean, I think it just happens, right? And you get into circles of people that maybe you shouldn't be running with. And I learned that many times over, you know, there's mm. people that I ran with that they weren't my freaking tribe. I thought they were at the time. Right. And I'm not talking bad about them. I, I, you know, I could name names, but I think they're, they're just people that they were just, they were going, just a, different direc going a different direction. Just bad advice. Right. Yeah. And I think, that was half my problem. I mean, like I, I just was in the wrong group of people. Right. Yeah. And it took me waking up one day and, and saying like, what am I doing? Like, why am I in, why am I in the ATM business? Like I, I'm a real estate guy. I want to be a real estate guy. You know, like why am I in the marketing agency business? I mean, yeah. obviously I want to be a marketer, but like, why am I doing that at that time mm -hmm. in that season of my life? Right. And and I think it was a lot of inner inner work and and inner reflecting and um and I still am working really hard on myself. Obviously, I'm, I'm not good. there, you know. Yeah. But um, but that is when I think I shifted and I was like, okay, I I burned some bridges I shouldn't have burned, right? I did some things I shouldn't have done. I said some things I shouldn't have done. Austin Zayn, I had to cut, go right cut, my wrongs. He cut a deal with me, and then reneged on the deal. <laughs> and when that happened. I gave him an ultimatum. I said, Austin, you owe me money. Pay the money mm -hmm. or finish the deal that we originally had. But it wasn't working out the way we wanted it to. So, hey, look, I, and I sold, I sold you my car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yep. sold, that's why that's, that's the, the Lamborghini. Yep. I sold you my Lamborghini, which was a great epic moment for, you know, one of my students to buy my car and we filmed a video around it. And it was like, it was kind of cool. But I told you when you bought the car, I said, you're buying the car for the wrong reasons, first off. Mm -hmm. And I'll cut you a deal on the car, but you got to sell my house, Yep, which is a win for you. And then when the house didn't sell, I said, hey, 
I need that money for the discount in the car that I took because you flipped the car and you made a bunch of fucking money. I didn't money intend on, on doing that. Yeah, yeah I yeah. know, but you, you made money. When I found out you yeah. made money on the car, I'm like, dude, well, just yeah. pay me the money that I took on a discount because that was rightfully mine. For sure. And you told me to fuck off. Uh, wrong thing to do, right? And yep. so, you know, and... And you did it by not telling me to fuck off. You just didn't. Yeah, you I just, didn't actually tell you yeah, to fuck off. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you just... You but just, I ignored you. You ignored me. I ghosted me, you. Yep. And I gave you the ultimatum. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to go on social. I'm going to light your ass up. Yep. Like, come on, bro. Don't do this. And you did it. And then your response was to go buy a Hubo. <laughs> <laughs> Which is still hot, by the way. With the money yeah. that you owed me. Um, uh, man, and, and, and that was know, actually kind of funny. I'm what, not going to lie. When I watched the Hublo video, I was like, you motherfucker. Yeah. You know, like, and I, I don't even know if I, maybe we'll edit this out after. But, uh, you know, Jamil gave me that advice, you know, back oh, then. Oh, I know. I know. Jamil's the one that told me to buy the Hublo. He, like, in particular. Oh, dude. J look, I love Jamil. Yeah. And don't cut this out. Because I love Jamil. <laughs> he's a good friend for both yeah. of us. And he he's the one that I actually love Jamil too, yeah. full circled and reconnected us because he actually told me I gave Austin bad advice. But mm -hmm. me and look, this business is crazy. You meet some of the wildest characters and Jamil's a funny motherfucker. Yeah. And he's also street. He's very <laughs> successful, but he's also street. And I'm street, you know, I, I came from nothing. And so, and so did you. Yeah. So it was like, we're all fucking with each other. <laughs> but you know what I'm most proud about this story is me and Jamil are now great friends. Yeah. Which is really cool to see. It's and 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 me and you made up because yep. you called me one day and I was very proud of you for saying you said, dude, I made the wrong call. You cut the check yep. years later and made it right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important for anybody watching because it really shows that's what a man does, right? They admit yep. their mistakes. We all make them. I can't tell you how many times I made a decision that I regretted later, you know, or I hurt a relationship that I regretted later. I, I still regret my fallout with Josh Altman. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I cut a deal with Josh Altman to publish him. And for many years, we made a ton of money together and we had a blast. And I'm so grateful for him cutting that deal with me. It elevated my game. It helped me build my personal brand. It got me into circles that I've never been on. I got on my first private jet because of him. Like, I couldn't be more grateful. But it ended so spectacularly fucking horrible with us lobbying lawsuits and shit at each other and lawyers and all this stuff. And I look back on that. I'm like, what a dumb fucking thing for us to dig in, mm. you know? And, and to this day, we're not friends and we should be friends, mm -hmm. you know, and we should be And you know, I don't think of it much. I just have moved on. I don't know. I mean, he was, in my opinion, he was more aggressive than I was. Sure. I was just sticking to the contract that we agreed to. And he was trying to fuck me and break the contract and different things. And that's a whole nother podcast yeah, yeah. for another day. But uh, I regret it, mm -hmm. you know? So we do things along. And we do. Pro hopefully someday we can make that right. But when you made that right, I was so fucking proud of you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah me, it means the world, dude. And I think I'm glad we're talking about it too. Cause I think there's people listening that uh, they need to hear that, you know, like, and I watched you and Jamil go at it for years. Like, dude, Jamil, I think Jamil ran an ad. Dude, Jamil fucking was mad at me. <laughs> he put an ad out on Craigslist yeah. for an Oscar Mayer Wienermobile at a discount <laughs> and put my real phone number out. One day I'm getting hundreds of calls. Hey, dude, you got the Wienermobile? Hey, can I stop by and get the fucking Wienermobile? <laughs> and I'm like, I, it took me a minute. I'm like, where are all these phone calls coming? Like, who put my phone number out there? And then I, because I'm Cody Sperber and I got fucking connections, I called some friends that were really good at computers and I said, find out whose IP address posted mm -hmm. these ads. Like, I want to know fucking everything. I was like on a mission to destroy somebody. And then I found out it was Jamil and I just started fucking laughing. Oh I, I was laughing so hard. I said, that is the most gangster, clever thing. And so we got it taken down and I, I texted, uh, a bunch of our friends that know Jamil and I'm like, you tell Jamil well fucking played. Wow. That was a good one. Yeah. yeah. Cause it was it was like funny, but it, it didn't really hurt. Mm -hmm. But it was just enough of a warning shot for me to be like, Jamil, you SOB. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you think like that it makes us you know, you obviously I admire you. I'm not on your level and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that I am. Um, but like, you know, you're, you, yes, you, you, are. you were saying like Jamil's yes, a street what do you mean dude. By that? Well, yeah, I just yeah, mean, you are you're older than I am. You, you have more experience than your belt, it, right? Dude. That's all it is. It's just time, right? So I'm 27. You're what, 45? I'm 80. Can I can I can I can I say live how old you are? I'm almost 45. Are you almost 45? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, because you were yeah you were 41 or 42 I think back back when we were uh in the same, in the office at, over yeah. in Tempe. Me and right? Austin used to be business partners. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And yeah. Green Elephant for a short period of time. Yeah. Very short. Yeah. Uh, prior to that, though, it was just... Uh, you made the right call. Set, you set. made the right call. Everything Dude, played out the way it Everything exactly happened for a reason, to. right? And um, I wouldn't be where I'm at had I not made those mistakes. So, like, it's such an interesting thing. And I was going to even ask you, like, how you, you know, it w- would you go back and change some of the things that, whether it be with Altman or, or Josiah or Jimmy or whatever. But, like, for me, it's like I made a big mistake, but I also wouldn't change it because I wouldn't be here. No, I don't. I don't look at it like that. Like, I love where I am. I love who I am. Even like last year, I I said it was the best year and the worst year of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we do things and make decisions along the way that really are out of pain or shame or guilt. And eventually, if you're a, a really good person and you work hard on yourself and you're always trying to level up, eventually you become better, faster, stronger, and, and, uh, for me, I'm a better dad than I've ever been. I'm a better friend than I've ever been. I'm healthier than I've ever been, but only because of how hard the last couple years were for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would I would not be this person, and I'm only the bomb.com right now in my own mind is because I'm in alignment. Mm. I'm in alignment with my values. I'm in alignment with my purpose. You know, I'm in alignment with my business partners. I'm in alignment with Shannon, who I'm going through a divorce with right now. Divorce is really hard. It's hard on a family. It's a lot of things, a lot of change, you know, and it's it's tough to go through it. But we're able to go through it with dignity and loving each other, unconditional love it's for awesome. each other. Yeah. We're great friends um, because of the amount of work I put in on myself and her on her end mm-hmm. just to, to level up, mm-hmm. you know. And so I don't, I don't, I wouldn't change anything. Sure. I do hope that I can have some conversations with people at some point, just like you made the call mm-hmm. to me and said, hey, dude, we need to talk. Like, yeah. what I did was wrong, and I need to make it right. I have a couple of those on my checklist, but yeah. wouldn't change it. No, you just have to go back and try to ri- try, try, try your best to mend or right your wrong yeah. or mend the wound or whatever, right? But yeah. um, I want to talk about that a little bit too. Uh, and then I guess we'll, let's go down the personal rabbit hole for a minute if you have yeah. time. And then I want to come full circle back to business at the very end and just have a couple final questions for you after that. But like, obviously I know Shannon, I know we, mm-hmm. I've known you for a long time. Um, you know, last year your mom died, you mm-hmm. said, right? Yep. yep. And I can't, can't even imagine my condolences, you know, go out to you. And, and obviously, uh, you'll be in my prayers for that. Um, I can't imagine I've, you know, my parents are still alive, not super close with them, but, um, what happened like last year, you, you talk about how it was this massive year financially, right. But personally it was just a crap year for you. So like, it was a tough year. You know, it's like, look, entrepreneurs are a special breed. Most small businesses don't last four or five years. You know, I've been doing this for 18 years. Mm-hmm. And, and it takes um, it takes some special ingredients to win as an entrepreneur. Mm. And the way I kind of think about things is it's kind of like Dexter, mm. right? Like we all have like a dark passenger in us that drives us. And the best entrepreneurs are kind of tormented. We, we are really good at putting ourselves in really fucked up scenarios. And we can use these powers for good or we can use them for bad. And there's a lot of people that are like from the streets that are like decide to go sell drugs and they end up in prison for the rest of their life or even worse crimes. They would have made great entrepreneurs. Phenomenal. They made a great on real estate investors. They just applied their thing to something super negative. For me, all, growing up, and I know your story really well, so like, you know, like I know your pain that you carry. Mm-hmm. I know your some of your self limiting beliefs just from being around you so much. I had so much fucking pain that I carried, but you would never know it. If you no. would have asked me, did you have a good childhood? Hell yeah, love my parents, great people. But when you really dig in, and we all have it, you know, there's a lot of things that happen to us as kids that that put shame and guilt and pain inside of our subconscious. And we wonder why we explode on the freeway when somebody cuts us off. Mm. We wonder why if, uh, if some poor waitress gives us the wrong meal, we're fucking lighting them up in front of everybody. And it's like, this person makes minimum wage plus a couple tips. Like, 
why am I destroying that their my day and their day because they brought me the, you know lettuce on my burger or whatever. Yeah. And it's really a subconscious programming that we got to put in the work and unwind. The challenge with a lot of people is we take that pain and we channel it into certain things. Some people become addicted to drugs, alcohol, gambling, hookers, whatever. Some people, like me, channel it towards achievement. Mm -hmm. I wanted to control so fucking badly because I was so bullied, because I was so out of control as a kid, because I moved, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten times by sixth grade, and I was never had, I never had stability. Because my mom was bisexual, because my mom was hyper-religious and my grandparents were hyper-religious and they were Pentecostal and they spoke in tongues and they said crazy shit to me and they scared me. Because my parents split mm -hmm. multiple times as a childhood or when I was a kid and I saw my parents dating other people and my mom making out with the woman in the kitchen and my dad, you know, fucking the secretary on the stairs and like just walking in and just like not, and no, my parents never talked about anything. They just, it never happened. If I asked them, like, what is going on? They'd be like, go outside, stand in the hall. Don't worry about it. And then when they saw me, they'd say, go to your room, go clean your room, go do your homework, move on. Mm -hmm. And here I am as an adult, and I'm a pro at compartmentalizing and burying pain. And moving on. And fucking, it never happened. Yep. Great for business. This is what I meant by a dark passenger. It's great for me because I, I could stand a lot of pressure. I can move on as if it's not a fucking big deal. Mm -hmm. And I can channel all that energy and desire for control into achievement. Mm. But at some point, I got bored. And I made it 14 years in my marriage before I got bored. And what happens with two people when they're, when they're in a relationship, but they're not fighting for that relationship every second of every day? Mm. We're great friends. Yep. But we were great friends going one degree in two different di di directions over a long period of time. All of a sudden you wake up and your significant other is on the other side of a fucking canyon. And everything was bo and was bothering me. And I couldn't figure out why. My relationship with Hudson was bothering me, my, my son, because he was just like me. He didn't listen to a single thing I fucking said. And you know Hudson. Like, he's a wild animal. Now me and him are like bestest of friends. But being a dad to a mini you... You, you see in them the things you hate most in you. Mm. So I was rebellious, rebellious as a kid. I was hyperactive as a kid. He's rebellious and hyperactive, but yet I want to control him because in my business life, I control everything. I own my businesses. Every, all my team members do what I say. Mm -hmm. I get to pick and choose what I do all day long, and then I come home to chaos, right? Yep. And it felt disrespectful, and I created a story and next thing you know, what, do you, what, what happens to, there's nothing more dangerous, Austin, than a rich, bored entrepreneur. We can get ourselves into a lot of fucking trouble. Mm -hmm. And so I fucking cheated. And when I cheated, I knew I couldn't go back. Now, it was only with one girl and it happened uh, 14 years into the relationship. Mm -hmm. But I fucking knew it. Yep. I knew it. And I compartmentalized and buried it and pretended like it never happened. And it starts small. It doesn't, you don't just like go and cheat like one day. You, you, you justify it. I got millions of social media followers. I got, I come off stage. All these people come up next to me. They're telling me how fucking great I am. Ego gets in the way. You start justifying it. Next thing you know, it starts with just opening a conversation or opening a door. Mm -hmm. For some men, it starts by starting to watch porn and then you get more aggressive. And next thing you know, COVID hits and you go through the whole fucking free porn catalog and you're like, what's next? Let's go to real hookers. Let's go to real. And if you have money, anything's possible. Trust me, I could walk into any any strip club, any room, any anything, and buy it all. Yep. You know, and so I can get myself in a lot. That wasn't what I was doing, but like you can. Yep. And I know men that do this. And then they come home to their wives and they pretend like nothing happened. And they wonder, and we wonder why we never get to the next level. Mm. Why we never are able to unlock that next level. It's because we're not in alignment. Wow. And it was eating at me and eating at me and eating at me. And I finally got to a point where I was like, fuck it, I'm going to get a divorce. And the way I felt about it was, it was more shame and guilt internally that I did it because I didn't want to be that person. And I didn't want, I, she deserved more than that. And she was a great friend and a great 
best mom and is just a great human being. And I find I watched her put in a tremendous amount of work working on herself and she was evolving and becoming a better woman. But here I am stuck in this guilt, in this shame. And I just decided one day I'm not going to steal any more of her minutes. Wow. I didn't want to be with her anymore. I wanted to get a divorce. I wanted out, but I went about it the wrong way. And I just wasn't man enough to fucking say, yo, this is this is how I'm really feeling because I was scared to, that, of that confrontation. Mm. And once you kind of do it, it's easier to do it again, mm-hmm. right? It's easier to justify it again. I wasn't out like doing that, but like I'm just saying like it definitely got easier. And I had gone back and I saw the same girl multiple times, but it just was like, it was wrong mm-hmm. and I knew it. And so finally one day I fucking confessed and I was just like, dude, this is, this is it. And I had kind of hinted to her, like, I wanted to see other girls. And we had talked about everything, open relationships, all that shit. That shit doesn't work. Right. It doesn't work, man. You know what works? Being a fucking real man and stepping up and going and putting in the work necessary to unconditionally love yourself. Mm-hmm. I couldn't give Shannon what she wanted or any woman what she wanted because I couldn't even give it to myself. Mm-hmm. I wasn't there emotionally because I still carried around all this shit from my childhood. And subconsciously, I didn't, I didn't even know how bad it was affecting me and my relationships. But then my mom dies and my marriage is falling apart and you hit rock bottom. And then you realize that more fucking rock bottom exists. And then rock bottom has a basement. And then you just keep fucking digging yourself lower. And it's lie, little lies on top of lies because you never want to hurt people and you never want to fully confess. And this happens with addicts and this happens with people who just aren't aren't willing to you know face their fucking demons mm-hmm. but it got it does get so bad and guys like me we need ran the fuck over before we finally make a change and that's just what happened i got ran over and i decided that enough was enough and i drew that line in the sand and i checked myself into scottsdale uh at this place in scottsdale called psychological counseling services mm-hmm. paid 10 g's went into their week-long men's intensive. Mm -hmm. I did one year's worth of therapy in one week, 14-hour days for seven days in a row with some of the best psychologists and experts in the world, best addiction experts. Because I I was like, dude, do I have a sex addiction? Like, what the fuck would cause me to think that this was even remotely okay, Mm -hmm. right? And hurt my family. And I went and did a tremendous amount of EMDR and horse therapy and acting therapy and all the therapies that I didn't even know existed. And on the other end of that, Mm -hmm. I started to let go of a lot of that pain and shame and guilt. Mm -hmm. And I had gone to, I I still go to counseling. I love it. I think every man should go to counseling. You want to level up in life? Go to fucking counseling. Go have open heart surgery on your inner child. Really go deep, confront all that pain and learn how to love yourself. And coming out of that, my relationship with my son started to light up. I started to gain more empathy. I I am a textbook narcissistic tendencies type of guy. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. I would have been a great serial killer. It's very easy for me to not give a fuck. Mm -hmm. But I started to give a shit and I started to connect on a deeper level with everybody around me. And that's because my energy shifted. I I was doing all this breath work. I was doing all this therapy and my energy just shifted. Now, and I want to be the kind of guy that walks into a room that makes an impact, Mm -hmm. that changes the weather. You know, I want to be the positive, uplifting excitement that walks in a room. People go, who the fuck is that? Right? I want to change the weather. I don't want to let my environment change me. I want to change the environment. And that's that intention and that enthusiasm only is powerful if you put in the real work behind it right. to, to make it authentic and real. And best things that ever happened to me are some of the worst things that ever happened to me because it forced me to go and do that. And now I'm a great co-parent and I'm a great friend. And I went around to all my business partners and I immediately apologized to all of them. And I confessed everything to everybody. And I said, listen, if I'm willing to fuck my wife over, I'm willing to fuck you guys over. Mm-hmm. Like what a horrible business partner to be. Yeah. Somebody that's willing to break a contract. Like marriage is a contract, you know? Mm-hmm. And I justified it. And, and there's going to be a lot of men listening to this right now 
it's not too late for you. Maybe you're starting to open up those doorways. Like in therapy, they teach it as red light, yellow light, green light behavior. Yeah. Yellow light behavior, like we all know red light behavior, right? It's yeah. you cross the fucking line. Green light behavior is like healthy actions. Yeah. We all know those. It's the yellow light ones that you justify and get into trouble with. It's like, oh, I'll respond to that DM. Right. Hey, what's the big deal? It's a bunch of guys. We're out on a trip. Let's just stop by that strip club. Yep. Not saying you can't. Saying call your girl and say, I'm stopping by the strip club. Right? Giving you a heads up. This is what we're all doing. I'm along for the ride. Yep. Whatever you want to do, do it. Just be authentic and open about it. Um, because alignment equals velocity. And uh, so, yeah, that's why it was, yeah. it was like this best and worst year. But, but look, now here we are in 2023. I've always had people be like, Cody, I, something's changing about you. Mm -hmm. The way you market, the way you talk, your copy, your, your podcast, everything like is more impactful. It's because I've, I've put in all this work to become this person that really doesn't care about the next level. I'm not trying, it's like the next level's happening because I don't give a fuck about the next level. I only wanna be a great person. I only wanna make, be a great friend. I wanna be, have great relationships. The money, don't give two shits about. Yeah. You know, it's like, I know so that, I know that'll come. Yeah. It's gonna come. Uh, but if it is too late for you and you're sitting there going, what do I do? I've already cheated. I've already made the call. I've already crossed the line. Step one, extreme and total ownership, mm -hmm. period. Do the hardest thing and the most manliest thing you could fucking do is sit everybody down and confess and just open it up. I Nothing is more uncomfortable than having your girl ask you 10 billion questions and you having nothing, like just with all, 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 tell the truth about everything. And the, they'll repeat a hundred times. Like they don't ask one question one way. They ask it 700 ways until you're just beat down. So that's always step one is total ownership, extreme clarity and ownership. And then step two is go to a place like psychological counseling services and cut that fucking check and go deep. Because it's not the, hey, I'll go do a, a, a one hour counseling session, then come back two weeks later and then come back two weeks later and I'll do it for the next six months and I'll be healthy. That doesn't work. You gotta go immerse yourself in that. I shut down social. I shut down my businesses. Like I told my team what was happening and everybody has to step up and help me. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Everybody did. Yeah. They, 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 they showed so much love and compassion for me for what I was going through that they all stepped up and just everything, it made more money wow. while I was gone getting help. And so, yeah, do that, all that. Yeah. And then on the other end of it is trust the process. Nothing is harder than sitting in your fucking, dude, I'm rich. I live in an apartment. I own 50 luxury houses around town. I'm, they're all, I'm letting them Airbnb. I could go live in one of my luxury Airbnbs. I rented an apartment to remind me of where I'm at and what got me here. So I don't fucking forget like the pain I've caused and what's important. You know, I built this big house. I moved Shannon and the kids to a $5 million house in Queen Creek. They live in a mansion that I pay for. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Like, dude, I couldn't be happier where I'm at in life. Um, and that's the last step is, is you know, l live in it. And don't try to like pat it. Be uncomfortable being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know? being be, qui be uncomfortably quiet with yeah. your thoughts for a long period of time. Don't cover it up with alcohol or going out. And here's what I realized, and this is what's great about good friends. My, I, Dean Graciosi, fantastic human being, had been through some similar experiences, sends me a voice note one day. And this is what having great friends in, in your world does for me. He sends me this voice note and he said, brother, I just want to let you know, like you could make the choice to go out there and go to Scottsdale and become a fucking party animal and go whore around and justify it by saying, man, I was in a relationship for 18 years. Now I get to go do whatever the fuck I want. You're rich, go do it. And you're gonna have a lot of friends telling you, go do it. But you're putting in the work to become a valuable man. Mm. 
And if you do that, you're giving away your value. And a valuable woman will not show up until you realize that you're a valuable man and that you deserve a valuable woman. Mm -hmm. So that's, I'm gonna leave you sit with that. And I stewed on that. I listened to that audio message a thousand times and I was like, you know what? I'm not going fucking backwards. Wow. Period. So you won't find me out fucking a bunch of girls and like, you know, doing that. I'm just refused to go backwards. And instead, I would rather keep putting in this work because mm -hmm. I, like you said, I'm still finding my voice. I'm still finding my power. I'm still figuring out, am I in the next level? Is there another level? I don't know. But I know that th by this is God's plan and that this is my destiny and that he already knows every move that I'm going to make. Yeah. Right? Like, it's not like I'm going to outsmart God. This is, And I just have to trust the process. And so I'm now working on the different areas of my life that I had been neglecting for a long time. So the last two years, my health is on point. For the first time, I have a six pack. I love that. Dude, I am, my friend Wes Watson says, ripped, rich, and rare. I love it. I am, you know, one in 10 Americans are millionaires, but only one in 25,000 Americans have six packs. Mm. I wanna be one of the minorities that has a six pack that's a millionaire. Yeah. And so that takes dedication and work. I also want to be spiritually connected. I, I was scared of religion, Austin, my whole life yep. because my parents were Pente or my uh, grandparents were Pentecostal and they spoke in tongues and they did snake handling and they rolled their eyes and they, you know, flopped all over when they prayed. And I was like, "Fuck that! If this yeah. is really." And then you know, you look on the news and like all these Catholic people are fucking kids, and you're like, like "You're terrible. like definitely not joining no. that group," you know. And I just I just saw something uh, in that the the Mormon Church had like a uh, insane, like hidden, um, hedge fund that had like hundreds of billions of dollars in oh it. And gosh. I'm like, damn, those motherfuckers are gangster at <laughs> yeah. making money. Those are, and I, I know a lot of Mormons, they're great yeah. people, but damn, they're good at making yeah, money. Yeah. And so like, you look around and you're like, why would I ever do organized religion? Mm -hmm. But for me, I, I, I have experienced so much pain and evil thoughts, like p painful thoughts. Like I never wanted to kill myself, but I was there. I was yeah. on the edge, you know, like the fuck this, like what's the point? That if there's that, if there's evil, there's good. Mm -hmm. If there's the devil, there's God. Yep. And so I'm like, okay, I wanna, I wanna connect. And so for, Shannon didn't know this, by the way, nobody knew this. I used to say, I'm going to the gym. I would go to church and sit in the back and pray and cry, but this is before I told Shannon what I was doing. Sure, yeah. And I would just pray and pray and pray. And for years, I would pray a one-way prayer. I never heard anything back. There was no connection, there was no, nothing. but it's funny how everything plays out because it's like, yeah, I never heard anything back, mm -hmm. but God moved all the chess pieces around the board to get me to where I needed to be. For sure. Crazy, right? Crazy, wild. Unbelievable, so like now I'm cutting the check to join masterminds to be in Christian men's groups. Yep. Not because I wanna go down and be this like Bible thumping pastor type guy. I just want a relationship with God. Yeah. I want a, I want a relationship with my creator. And that was one of the things I learned in counseling is the very most important intimacy circle you can ever have is the one between you and your creator. So powerful. Guess who I had in my circle number one? Money, business, success. It's business. Yep. That was the most important thing to me. Yep. No wonder I'm going through a divorce. You know, I told Shannon when we were first getting started, don't get in the way of me becoming a billionaire or I'll fucking leave you. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful my dream was. I said, I'm going to obsess over this, but you will always be number two. Yeah. What woman wants to hear that? What a fucking dumb, boneheaded, young, stupid thing to say. And guess what? I did kill the money game yeah. and my relationship. Right. So. How, uh, man. I wish you had all day. Hopefully you have a little bit longer. Sure. Um, cause I, I, I just have so many directions I'd love to go that I, I don't, there's no possible way I'm going to be able to go all the directions. But, um, you, you said a little while back, like that you got, you just got ran over and then you change and then, and then you went and did the Scottsdale seven day, you know, year long, but seven day. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you did all these different things, but like looking back, like for, for somebody maybe watching, if maybe they haven't cheated quite yet or they haven't what whatever that cheated is for them like yeah. it could be it could be something different for the them drugs alcohol, they're about to make a big yeah. yeah they're about to go down a dark road right 
Is there a way, in your opinion, for somebody to change without getting ran over? Like, can't, yeah, how do you do that? In I your I, I'm not that guy. Yeah. I wish. I wish you could do it for periods of time, but to make it permanent, I'm not that guy. Sometimes you just if have you, to get ran over. If you over. figure that out, Austin, <laughs> tell me, because I ain't that guy. I have to be fucking ran over before I wake up, and I am willing to change. Right? Like, yeah. more people will run away from pain than towards pleasure. Yeah. That's a powerful one. And, and, it's, and it's true in marketing, right? I can tell you all day long, I'll help you get rich. That'll only lead you so far. That'll lead you to your wife saying, fucking refund and get my $500 back. Yeah. Okay. Right? Because that's pleasure seeking. The pain will move the needle way farther. Mm. And that's why even as a pro marketer, I have to remind myself what that feeling was back in the day when I was first starting. So when I'm writing my copy, I'm not country club Cody. Right. I'm not... Lambos, Rolls Royces, and $5 million houses, and 50 Airbnbs, and insane cash flow, and clicking buttons and making $10.8 million mm -hmm. on email. I'm not that Cody. You can't be. No, because I can't connect. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to pull out their wallet and say, I want to do something with you if I'm talking about all the fucking fluffy country club yeah. shit. So I got to transport myself back to that out of control, young wholesaler, that just got fucking pushed out of a deal by a real estate agent that is pissed off, that drives a piece of shit Nissan pickup truck, who had to borrow his dad's suit in order to go to an appointment only to get laughed off the fucking doorstep. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to be that guy that sat in his pickup truck crying because I got made fun of at an, a, a door knocking appointment mm -hmm. at a foreclosure. Going to meetings, finally getting a meeting with the biggest wholesaler in town only to have me sit in his fucking lobby for three hours before he finally let me into his office to give me maybe 45 seconds of his time before he said he had another appointment and then he'd have to call me later. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. I have to, you have to go back. You do. You know? And then when you finally reconnect, you're like, oh man, that's where the... That's yeah. where people will move the needle. If you've ever wanted to get into wholesaling real estate and you want to learn how to flip contracts and wholesale, right? Maybe you're brand new, maybe you've never wholesaled a deal, or maybe you're even doing a couple of deals a month right now, but you wanna learn how to do more, instead of joining my coaching program or somebody else's coaching program, we're actually looking to hire. So go ahead and message me, 480 418 5339 and send me a text message opportunity, okay? So if you wanna work with me, you wanna work with my incredible team, you want all of our leads, you want all of our systems, all of our processes, everything, right? And I've done about 2,000 wholesale deals in my career, then go ahead, shoot me a text, 480-418-5339 and message me opportunity and look, especially if you're in my state, okay, the state of Arizona. If you live in Arizona and you wanna get into wholesaling, this especially is an opportunity for you because you can come sit right in this office with my entire team and be a part of one of the biggest wholesaling companies in the country. I look forward to talking to you. And so I don't, I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe, but yeah. not me. So yeah, it's such an interesting thing. Um, you go to, Imp I saw you at Impact the other day. I saw I've been going to Impact since 2014. And you don't say hi to me? Uh, well, no, I didn't see you there. I saw in your story oh, that you yeah, were there. Oh, yeah, I'm going to Impact. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't actually see you that day, unfortunately. I don't know that I was there that day. I was there, that was two weeks ago, I think, when I saw you. I mean, I was there two days ago or whenever that was, but. Um, love that. Church, just, I love the music. There, <clears throat> I love the energy in that yeah. room. Uh, great lessons, always. I've been to Nicaragua with them three times. I know Travis really well. Yeah. I know Pastor Todd, Pastor Andre, like everybody at Impact I know at a really high level. So uh, if you ever- That's your spot. Yeah, huh? I've been All going right. there forever. I have a question though on that. You know, what was your biggest misconception about God and like faith and religion? Like now that you've kind of dove into that world a little bit more and you're, you're starting to pray and do the things that uh, you would consider yourself, yeah. I'd imagine, to be a Christian, right? Mm -hmm. um, like- Looking back a couple of years ago, like, because I, I don't remember you as a religious guy, you know, like no. even, even back when I knew you, which wasn't that long ago, right? Well, like what I said about organized religion, you know, I struggle with the business side of religion. It's a tax-free business. 
that builds in, I mean, what a better marketing strategy than to build in giving me money into part of the entire thing or don't get into heaven. Yeah. Right? It's like tithing. The concept of tithing, it just like, mm-hmm. What a great way to fund the operation is to make you feel like the one thing that you want the most, you can't get unless you give me money. But then I get to go fuck off and go buy private jets and live my best life. And we've seen these pastors that live on yeah. you know these crazy lifestyles as they scale these mega churches. And so I always struggled with that. But I never struggled with wanting to believe that there's something more. When I look up at the stars, it's all just so beautiful and, and overwhelming that I just can't imagine that humans are the fucking top of the species. And we just ended up here. We just randomly ended up here. And even if we did, it just, there's got to be more. Yeah. There's got to be more. And so I never, I always felt that. I just struggle because people lie. Mm -hmm. Men lie. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't around when Jesus was around, yeah. you know? So it's like, what is faith? You know, and how do I have faith in something where there's a lot of noise? Mm. And I struggle with that. Yeah. And I still do, dude. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not like I don't like believe with all of me, mm. you know, and I'm and I don't I don't I don't know how this is all gonna play out for me. I just know that like any muscle, prayer is a muscle. I and I keep getting this message like, hey, read the actual Bible. Like, like, like just start consuming it and digesting it. And so I'm working toward, that's my next step because mm -hmm. I've gotten good at like, okay, I'm going to the church. I'm doing my daily prayers. I have my daily prayer book. I'm, I'm doing every day. I pray all day, randomly throughout the day, different times. I love that. And I get, I, get I, I, I haven't really gotten a voice back or anything. Like I'm waiting to hear like, all right, Cody, I'm gonna hook you up. Yeah. So no, I don't know. I don't know. But I know that like anything that I put energy into, it starts to thrive. Mm -hmm. And so I'm putting energy into my spiritual side, putting myself around other Christian men, but I'm not, I'm just telling you, I'm yeah. open to learning about other things too. Like, I, I don't know if I believe with all of me that there's one way and that's yep. it. And I struggle with that. That's like, I got to learn. That's why I'm putting myself in these groups. And I, I cut Erwin McManus a check for 30 G's yeah. to be in his private Christian men's mastermind with a bunch of other badass ballers that all stroke the check for 30 G's. He's one of the best pastors in the country and the best communicators in the country. And these are questions I have for him, you know, mm -hmm. like, how do I reconcile some of these thoughts? Yeah, it's tough. I, and I don't think anybody that I've ever met is like, I mean, I think people, even the strongest people of faith go through a time where they, they're like, what am I doing here? Like, I mean, even me and, and, you know, all the people that I look up to, like that I've seen them in real either, either i've seen or I, they've told me that like there's been a time where yeah. they doubted they they weren't sure they they didn't know they veered off in in a different direction and then they kind of like came full circle back somehow and then a lot of times like is when they have the next level of like yeah. belief or faith or whatever it wasn't just like that they initially my, my, had it my struggle is really the news is fake <clears throat> it's fucking fake it's been proven that it's fake. Mm -hmm. They say shit that isn't real. Yeah. They report on things that aren't accurate and it's getting worse. It's fake. How do I know the things I was taught in school as a child that conditioned me to think about certain things isn't wrong? Mm. Right? Was Jesus white? Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> Why is he white in everything I ever saw? You know, it's like, yeah. it's like, that's where I struggle. It's like, you, and even the pastor doesn't fucking know. Yeah. You know, it's like he believes. And that's really what I'm looking for in this. I want a relationship with my creator so I can believe. Mm. It doesn't matter what happens next. Sure. I, I just have that faith becomes a belief. And yeah. then I just feel better about it all and, so and myself. And like, that's really what I'm looking for is just a relationship. Yeah. What is like, this is a random question you maybe you've never been asked. What is an insult that you've gotten at some point in your life that you're proud of? Have you ever been insulted? At, but you're proud, but you're proud of that. An insult. I mean, fuck, dude, I've been called a lot of shit. What something you've been called that you're proud of, though? You owned that. You're like, man. Well, obsessive. Upset for sure. Like, like. I'm the type of person that like, it's like a light switch. 
it's on or off, mm. right? But when it's on, it's fucking on. And it's one of those things where I can become so laser focused and obsessive about a goal or a, something that I want to achieve mm -hmm. that I will literally burn the rest of the world down in order to accomplish that one mm. thing. I can, it's, it is a fucking superpower. I know a lot of entrepreneurs have it, but from the outside, it's, it's like, whoa, like people don't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, also narcissistic and rude. Mm. It's like, no, I'm evolved. Mm. You know, I know how to channel all my power and energy into accomplishing great things that you fucking think are impossible or you can't even fathom, or you haven't even thought of, mm. you know? And it's rude to you because I don't want to I don't want to go play. I don't want to go party. I don't want to, you know, waste time in this stupid fucking conversation about sports, <laughs> yeah. right? And that's because I value time more than you. Mm -hmm. I value where I'm going more than this conversation. And people go, oh, God, that's, dude, Cody's such a dick. Right. It's like, okay. Well, you memorize all the sports stats, right? And you jump up and down wearing some other dude's name on the back of your shirt every Sunday. And I'm gonna go create a fucking empire that's gonna set me and the next ten generations. And put free. my own name on my shirt. And I'll put my own fucking name on my shirt. And I'll celebrate the whole time. And dude, you can hate and you can call me a dick. And I guarantee one of a couple of things is gonna happen at some point. You're either gonna ask for advice, ask for a job, or ask to borrow money. <laughs> and when that happens, I'm gonna look at you and just be like, I got you. I'm not even gonna bring up the fact that you called me a dick a thousand times behind my back or made fun of me or didn't invite me anymore or like me and whatever. It's yeah. like, hey, I'm gunning I and I want that. more out of life and and I'm willing to call out the bullshit and not and 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 hurt your sensitive feelings yeah. versus partake in this bullshit. I love it. Yeah. You got like 10 more minutes. I got a couple Dude, more. Fuck. Dude, let's go. Um, this is, if you, if this you is get, like a Joe Rogan podcast. Dude, I love We're it, like bro. Going. The, the, these are the ones that go, though. These are the ones that roll. Yeah. If you, 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 you have O-Snap, you've got whole, the wholesaling thing, you've got these masterminds, you have Thrive, you've got the Airbnbs, you've got the development company. If for some reason you could only do one of them mm -hmm. for the rest of your life, which, which business would it be? That's a tough one because my, my passion is clever investor. Mm -hmm. I love my students, my community, teaching. I love the impact, I love building a brand, I love marketing, I love the challenges. It's been my little workhorse engine that could that has opened up all these other businesses to thrive, right? It's like that platform has given me all these other platforms. What I want to do the most of though is the development company. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like I've dominated the single family house game. I've done a great job. L over the last two years, we got into Airbnbs because I wanted to own more real estate. We bought over 40, $50 million worth of real estate. That was fun. Mm -hmm. And we learned the Airbnb business and that was challenging and fun. And I love new things. I'm like, how many times can I fucking wholesale a house? Like yeah. I'm, I'm over that, you know? And being a builder was kind of cool, you know, building these really beautiful spec homes. That was fun and challenging, but houses, are risky, especially in a downward economy mm. because you have one asset and it's it's per use. Yeah. Meaning like if I build a house and sell it, now it matters if you like what I built. Mm -hmm. So my window of potential customers is very limited based on the type of house I built and how expensive it is and what I put in it. And so I'm. it's almost like I'm gambling mm -hmm. a little bit in a downward economy. Whereas with multifamily and commercial, because of the tax benefits and the cash flow potential and the ability to leverage and use other people's money, we can build some serious real wealth. And if you look at what's happening in the market, billions, maybe even trillions of dollars worth of commercial real estate in the last few years got put under contract or purchased using bridge loans. And their whole plan was to buy an apartment complex for $17 million, fix up, like let's say it's a 100-unit apartment complex, and they're going to fix up 10, 20 of the units, and then flip the thing within 24 months, right? And make four, five, six, seven, eight million. I know because I did it by, a, I'm doing one by ASU, an 81 unit over by ASU wow. where we paid $17 million and we fixed 10 units, 12 units, and now we're sitting on it because the cap rates are down and the value has gone down and we're in this bridge loan 
And at some point, now thankfully, we have another year on the bridge loan and the one year extension. So I could ride this thing out for two more years and the cash flow covers, I, I'm still $30,000 a month in positive cash flow on, on the project. So I'm okay for two more years. But at some point, if I, let's say I only had six more months or eight more months on that bridge loan. Now, if I wanna sell, I'd have to break even or even lose money on the deal. Mm. And as time goes on, there's going to be hundreds, if not thousands of these apartment owners and commercial property owners that find themselves in a situation where they're gonna be at or upside down in value. The bridge loans are now done. They can't afford the extensions or there are no extensions and they gotta get take their losses. And this is prime time for me to pivot and buy more apartments. So I started last year getting into the apartment business. We've always done apartments, but not like as the main thing. It was always like, hey, we got this hotel that could do an apartment conversion. Let's flip it. Yep. Now it's like, let's own them forever and never get rid of them. And so that's been our focus is getting an apartment. So right now I have uh, 294 units in Georgia. Mm -hmm. I have the 81 unit by ASU. I have a, uh, I don't even want to tell you where. It's in a very prime city next to an amazing park here in Arizona. It's mm -hmm seven acres of land or 10 acres of land. I'm going to subdivide it and put three acres um, and sell it off to retail and take the other seven acres and build my first ground up multifamily deal. Mm, so we're, we're, you'll hear me start talking about that and I'll raise money for that, which is why uh, we started Clever Capital Fund, you know, so I can get people involved in my projects. Accredited only for now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, we're, we're doing that. And then, uh, and then I have another one that's on off of Main Street in Mesa and that I'm looking at right now. And uh, we're just trying to get into the multifamily game as aggressive as possible over the next few years, take advantage of all these bridge loans come and do. Become, like, this is why I said build a personal brand. What's my, I said earlier, my real job is email. Mm -hmm. My second real job is raising capital. Yeah, I can't do that if I, if I don't have an audience. Wow. Right. And so loud. being loud, and I told Pace Morby this, I said, I called him up one day or I sent him a voice message one day. I said, dude, you're building one of the greatest communities I've ever seen. And you'll be one of the biggest, if not the biggest real estate investor in the history of ever. Mm -hmm. But you're missing the point. The point is raising capital. The point is getting into multifamily and doing bigger things. You're not thinking big enough. And what I love about Pace is the next fucking day he had his whole entire squad pivot. Wow. Got the got the funds, learned how to do fund funds, learned how to set up a fund, learned how to raise capital. And I introduced him to some of my multifamily contacts. Instantly, he's in the multifamily game. He bought thousands of units of multifamily from that day forward. That's awesome. It's freaking amazing to watch. And I'm like, dude, me and him are in the same wave like yeah. that. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Yeah. Like, let's go, baby. And you got a great audience. So I would encourage you, hey, dude, I'll help you set up a fund. Mm -hmm. You get involved in my deals by raising money into your fund and your fund invests into my fund when mm. we go buy the project. Wow. Yeah. Now you're able to weasel your way into a GP position, right? Mm -hmm. Because now we're co-GPs on a project and we're both raising money. And then you can learn their multifamily business by helping work the project itself. Because technically you can't just raise money and then earn a GP spot. Sure. You need to provide more value than just raising money. But if you do the more value thing, now you can weasel your way into some deals yep. using other people's money. Learn the game. Learn the game. And now, 10 years from now, like I made tens of millions of dollars in from 2007 to 2013. Tens of millions. Right place, right time, market crash. And they say in the average adult's lifetime, there's four, maybe five yeah. times where you have an opportunity of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And and I think they also say that same, not to interrupt you, is you miss like three of them. You miss a bunch the of them. The average person that they don't, you don't even recognize. So, yeah, because you're young or you're old. But that middle sweet spot, I I, I I was at the right place at the right time in 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Mm -hmm. I took advantage of it and I, I did well. Imagine if that same exact scenario happened again, but now I'm me and I have my skills and capabilities. I remember, oh, I'd make hundreds of millions. Game over. Game over. Yeah. This next crash is going to be different. It is, Kiyosaki calls it a three times crash. <laughs> There's a three times crash. There's a stock market crash. There's a real estate crash. And, and, and then there's a currency crash. Mm -hmm. It's going to be different because it's not a bunch of bad loans. 
but the real estate is gonna go down in value and really hard in certain markets. Mm -hmm. The only thing propping it up right now is supply and demand. Mm -hmm. There's still a r ridiculous demand. That demand will fizzle if interest rates keep going up. And we're seeing it right now. I mean, you're, you're an expert in the real estate yeah. space. Tr retail real estate is going to get fucking hammered. Brokerages will go out of business. Yep. They will be a mass consolidation between brokerages. There'll be a mass consolidation. A lot of real estate agents will go back. Like right now, we're, we're lucky. There's like twelve or 13,000 active listings on the MLS here in Arizona. Yeah. Dude, this isn't normal. We no, should no. have we should have 20,000, 25,000 active Probably listings. 35. Yeah. Yeah. We have 13,000. Yeah. It's dwindling. Mm -hmm. It's going down. It went, it went from 4,000 to 22,000 and back down. And now we're back we're halfway and, back and down. And that's cuz interest rates are rising again and people are pulling their house off the market and they're not they're like not wanting to sell cuz they can't get into another house at a reasonable price with a good interest rate. So they're like dude, dude, 40 million Americans 5.7 trillion dollars worth of loans refinanced from 2020 to 2022. Isn't that wild? Or 2021 and 2022. Yeah. That's over 55% of the entire mortgages ever created were created in that two year time span, but with a 4% mortgage or less, they are never freaking going to give that up. So that's our saving grace right now. But at some point, the pain in the economy and with currency and maybe war or these banks collapsing, something is going to trigger and push us over. Agreed. The Fed keeps raising interest rates, which they're going to at least two more times. Our economy is going to be purposely put into a recession. It has to, to tame inflation and get things right. You can't print 5.7 trillion and hand it out and not have consequences. Yep. You can't have $31 trillion worth of debt and not have consequences. Our currency is worthless. We are in a made up game mm -hmm. ran by a bunch of fucking idiots. Right, that we don't really have any control over. And this is why I love financial education. This is why I love what you do, Austin. Uh, you're exposing people to a higher wavelength of thinking about money and money management and, and cr creating more money and keeping more money and these different investing strategies. Things we're not teaching our kids any other place. They're listening to you because you're cool and it's a podcast and it's the right medium and they're being exposed. And the, I can't control gas prices or the economy but I can't control what I do on a daily basis in my household. For sure, 1 and, million percent. And go buy a bunch of, look, I said earlier, you want to retire with $10,000 a month, you need to have $3.5 million at age 60. You got to look in your bank account and have 3.4, 3.5 million to get $10,000 a month for 20 years at a 4% inflation rate, adjusted inflation. Or you just listen to what Austin and I are talking about and you go buy 10 Airbnbs and boom, you're done. You go buy two apartment buildings, boom, you're done. Yep. I just told you the 81 unit, I only put a couple hundred grand into that. We raised the other 17 million. Right. Right? Either through traditional bank loans or raised four, five, six million dollars in 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 uh um accredited investor mm -hmm. funds. And next thing you know, we bought this Even asset. That big deal, yep. Renovated it. And it makes even in its scenario where we can't flip it right now like we thought we were going to because we were going to make about seven million on the flip we still make 25 thirty thousand in positive cash flow right and right you have there. the asset right and we have them you control the asset right yeah mm -hmm. yeah and if i wanted to we can go renovate more units and increase rents a little bit more like but we're, we're chilling right now sure right there is your golden year retirement plan one thing and i guarantee if you put your energy towards it for a year or two Within two years, you can have an apartment building spitting off 30K of cash. I love that. And you're free. And anybody forever. can do you it, You can bro. surf in Bali for the rest of your fucking life mm. and never look back. Anybody can do it. Anybody can get to the game we're talking about. Anybody. Time, consistency, doing it day in and day out, proximity, get around people that have what you want, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right? those things. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. If you had a loud, if you, if you had the attention of the whole world, Yeah. okay, for 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 two minutes. Joe Biden's an idiot. Right. Fire, what would you what would you him. say? You oh, had the sorry. attention of the whole world. Eight billion people. I think there's eight billion. Seven point nine. I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell them? You had their attention for two minutes. Dude, what kind of question is that? 
<laughs> you know me, I'm a marketer, dude. Come on, I'm, a, bro. I'm about to get rich. <laughs> no, uh, geez, I don't know, man. That's a really tough question because yeah. I mean, that's some Elon Musk shit. For sure. Like you gotta you gotta make a power move and, and get, impact the world. Yeah. I don't even know. What would you say to that? That's like it would probably I mean, be something deep. It would just be it wouldn't maybe it wouldn't be business. Maybe that that's the like moment I have the where, Eminem song like yeah in, like the lose it song playing uh -huh. in my head right now about like it's your moment don't screw it up uh huh God it, I don't know either I think like it would do you be, go for the money do you go for the impact you'd have to have more context I guess to the question it because in the moment right like if you at first thought it's like okay I'm gonna make an impact. And you're not thinking about like money or, or business. But then if you think about it for like a second longer, then you're like, well, what, what's the context here? Like, is it? Yeah, because here's my thought. Look, you know why I love money? And this is why I hate when, when parents fuck kids' heads up over money. And they give them the worst relationship with money. And they say boneheaded things like, what am I, made of money? To money grow on trees. Yeah. Turn the lights off when you leave. Yeah. It's just turn like the air conditioner off. Scarcity. We... Everything's scarcity. Everything. Everything is money runs away. Rich people are greedy. Yep. You know, and it's like money is the greatest empowerment tool because that's what we run off of, right? I could, um, I, I saw a clip when I was younger of, uh, is it Steve Irwin, mm -hmm. the crocodile hunter? Yep. Saying, oh, I love money. Give me all the money, your money, his money, everybody's money, because I'm going to go buy up all the land and conserve wildlife for future generations. Mm. And I, I remember thinking to myself, this guy's got it. Mm. He wants all the money so he can go and make the most impact for the thing he cared about the most, which was conser conservation. And I'm like, damn. So if I had my moment, I'm going to try to figure out how to make the most money so that way I can then go do what I really want to do after the moment is over. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. I love that. And that's what I think I would yeah. do. I don't know what that would be. I'd For have to sure. really think about like how how am I gonna how am I gonna make the most money? Yeah. That's a tough one. I love it, dude. I don't think I have the answer either. I don't think I do either. That's why I, I wanted to see if you had it. I don't have it. Um we'll 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 wrap up. I know, I know I've taken a lot of your time and I really appreciate your time. Um one one final question is I know Hudson, right? Yeah. Y you know, Hudson, let's just say for whatever reason, you, Hudson's you, my son, by the way. Hudson's Cody's son. He, how old is he now? He's thirteen. Holy cow! He's about to be fourteen. That's ridiculous. I remember like him being like little bit L little kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he is just like you. It's so funny you say that. He's mm -hmm. like identical Cody, like miniature Cody. I, I saw him at the he's, event. He's the other better night. than me though. Yeah, he's he's because he had me. He can learn from you, right? Yeah. So, which leads me into the question. Um, you know, for whatever reason, you could just give him one piece of advice. And, and I, who knows why that would be, right? But you, you know, you were gonna, you, you were never, you were gonna, you knew you were gonna die. I don't know. And, and you were only able to leave him with just one thing, one, one piece of life advice that he could remember you by and kind of just take on with him and mm -hmm. live his life by. What would that be? Yeah, I'd say, look, dude, you're gonna go through a lot of growth, especially from a 14 year old on to becoming an adult. There is nothing better that you can do for yourself and the people around you than to figure out how to love yourself unconditionally. Mm. I, I wish I wasn't 43, 44 years old before I really went and put in the real work. Mm. I wish I would have done it. A lot of my pain came from 13-year-old Cody. Mm. I was a late bloomer. Nope, I didn't, I didn't grow. Everybody grew around me. I was still little. Everybody got fake. Dude, I had a friend in seventh grade with a fucking mustache. I'm like, dude, where'd you get a mustache, man? Like, you're like a dude, like a man. <laughs> I felt like such a little kid. And I was always the friend. I was never the guy that the girls wanted to fuck. I was the friend. Mm. I, I, I gained skills of being funny or great storytelling or becoming like, you know, figuring out how to like, get in those circles, but I was never really invited. I was always an outsider. I was always the underdog. And the amount of bullying I had to go through, which was awful, I hated it. I hated high school. My wife's experience in high school was totally different than mine. She was star athlete on the soccer team, beautiful. All the jocks wanted her. She, she had this great group of friends. And, uh, she loved high school. She would go redo high school a thousand times. I couldn't wait to get the fuck out of there. I hated it. And I hated how I felt every single day I was there. Thank God I was just narcissistic enough to not want to kill myself. 
Because I know a lot of people that would rather just die than to ever live that experience again. Mm -hmm. And I have the feeling that he's going to go through a, a similar experience because he's mini me. And I wish that I would have not had fake confidence, that I would have went and put in the real work to love myself, to have real unconditional love for myself and have that kind of confidence. Because his personality, he's a king. He's a rainmaker. He's gonna he from he's gonna way earlier on figure out how to change the weather in any room he walks in, be, way faster than I ever did, and his potential is really unlimited. To be such a superstar in whatever he chooses to do, but he's got to get out of his own way to do that, and he's got to learn to channel the one thing that's the the thing that can also hold him back, and that's his unlimited energy that he has. That hyperactivity is his greatest gift. His ADHD is his greatest gift, and it just needs to be channeled. He gets in trouble at school. Every all, Adults hate it because they can't control him. I look at it like that is his greatest gift. Mm -hmm. He's got to learn how to harness it. But you can't do that properly if you feel out of control emotionally mm. and you don't really like yourself emotionally. And that's my biggest fear is that he'll go down the wrong path by getting a, he's He has an addictive personality. He will gamble or do drugs like this kid loves scratchers already he you know these kids get conditioned playing games right they mm -hmm. buy tickets to spin wheels and and play gambling games but that are masked behind getting a gun in roblox or getting a new suit of armor in one of his you know mm -hmm. games that he plays with his friends and it's just conditioning these kids to be addicted to screens and to get addicted to gambling and get short-term pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. Instant gratification, yeah. all that bullshit. And so I would say, learn to love yourself, learn to channel that energy, and heart, you know, apply it to positive things mm -hmm. because, and he would naturally do that if he really loved himself. Yeah, yeah. I love that, dude. That's a tough work. A there, there was out. a lot going on there for me to get to a fucking point, but it was powerful. I know that out of control feeling. I did every drug under the sun. If it was in front of me, I fucking sniffed it, snorted it, smoked yeah. it. I didn't give a shit, right? Mm -hmm. Thank God I got sick from a lot of those things, and I never did it a second time. Yeah, But I was willing to do it because of the pain I was in. I wanted to escape. Wow. You know? It's powerful, man. And if he can avoid that and actually channel it to po positive things, and he has the ability to... Because I don't say that shit around my kids. Hey, Dad, can I get money to buy this thing? Let's figure out a way to create it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. I never say bullshit, negative things about money. It's always future casting, positive. How can we make this happen? Think bigger. You're not thinking big enough. Mm. Fuck. If I had <laughs> my dad was on the same level as me, I'd be a thousand times further along. Not wild. Yeah. yeah. Number one thing you want to do is just see your kids. I don't have any kids, but I, I want, you know, we will uh, at some point is just to see them outdo you. I think, I mean, that's the whole point that you, you would assume, right. It's just to, pass down what you did what you wish you would have learned and the life you wish you would have had and the lessons you you learned along the way and shortcut their learning curve and hope they keep yeah. they do the same thing right yeah yeah it's greatest greatest joy as a father and uh you know there for a while man i was regretting having kids wow not because i don't love my kids but because i felt like when i felt like it was an impediment towards my goals what a dumb fucking thought. Because now they are my number one source of joy. You know, it's like I look, I, I have this, this such a great relationship with them now. I'm just like, God, what was I thinking? Mm -hmm. You know? So powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And you really hope that people can just watch the video or listen to the audio and, and take it in. So it's a lot. You know, it's and a lot. like be able to actually implement some of what we're talking about, right? Because, I mean, if you could do that, like if people could mm -hmm. do that, if people could just take other people's mistakes and just, yeah. just try to implement it. Like, oh, I guarantee you, I'm gonna be the best affiliate for, and I, I'm not, I don't get paid or anything, but I will drive more traffic to psychological counseling services in Scottsdale, Arizona than any of their previous patients ever. Yeah, because I'm willing to go out and out and share the fucking bullshit that I went and through and be vulnerable. But and that's be, what makes you in alignment. It, it, and it holds me accountable. And I know there's going to be people listening to this that are really struggling right now that could be even greater than they are. The thing that has got you here is the number one thing holding you back. Mm. 
that dark passenger's got to go. So true, bro. Yeah, and then you'll then you'll really experience so real growth. And I and I've I'm yeah. And trust it's, me, I'm scared. Cool, Look, this is gonna blow back on me at some point. Some ten years down the road, I'm gonna be doing some big boy shit, and they're gonna be playing these clips of me acting, you know, talking about cheating or whatever, and they're gonna try spin it, and I don't give a fuck. Yep. You know, because I'm like, dude, if I, I guarantee, um, I'll get some DMs. I'm at Clever Investor, by the way. Would love to have some DMs from people yeah. who actually got impacted by this. I'll be your biggest cheerleader. It'll, I'll never repost it. I'll never say anything. I'll just be there to support you. But I would love to hear you take action on on some of the things we talked about and, yep. and level up. Uh, dude, yeah. 1 million percent. I'll get a bunch yeah. of them. I love it, bro. Men, there's, men are quietly in pain. Oh, for sure. Some quiet suffering. More than anybody. Yeah. 1 million percent. are supposed to be all strong and have all yeah, the answers bro. and all that shit. And it's just like, no, nah, man. Men don't cry. You, you see it all day long. We're conditioned that way, right? Dude, we I didn't have cry to... for 10 years mm -hmm. until 2022. Wow. Not yeah. once. I couldn't force a cry. I've cried more in the last year and a half than I've ever in my life, and I fucking love it. Yeah. Yeah. I, so powerful. The, the music starts at church. I'm bawling like a yeah. baby instantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, you're just grateful, bro. You, you're just yeah. in that moment. It took me a long time. And I don't think I'm there yet. Like I, I want to do more work, you know. But like I, I can, I can get emotional. Yeah. You know, like good. I can allow myself to get. It's hard though. Dude, it's really hard. It's attractive, bro. on on many levels. When 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 a man is truly connected and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's man. Let's dude. go, guys. Step your game up. Yeah. Phenomenal podcast, dude. I, by the way, I just want to acknowledge you. Like I appreciate you being on here. I appreciate you for being you know, a guy just that, uh, people can look up to and admire and I can look up to and admire and, uh, for, for being a role model in my life, you know, like for, for so many years, like, you know, I, man, I found you in 2014. Um, I paid clever investor back then, I think 10 grand or something. I don't even mm -hmm. remember anymore, but you know, j just the whole Ian became one of our most successful students right out of I the gate. That, dude. Yeah, yeah. Murdered it. I appreciate that. Why, well, you know, but in a, in, a, in so many ways, I'm so similar to you. Like every time we talk, every time we've ever talked, and, and even more so now got, than you ever. Got, you got better hair than me, bro. You're better <laughs> looking than I ever was. But dude, I just, man, like I can relate. And I, and I, every time we talk, I just, I take action. Like I go and I Good. do things. And, and I hope that other people can get as inspired as I get. And so I just want you to know how much I appreciate you and uh, means the world that you took the time to be on the pod and that you were here today. And by the way, I could go for another two hours with you, but we yeah. we both got places to be and 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 you know things to biggest, do. Biggest so. biggest thing that they could do for me, is, besides giving you five star reviews, because I think they should. Yeah. You know, when you have great guests on, that's that's the that's the give back. Like you're not asking for anything. I'm telling you to go give this guy <laughs> some five star reviews. It helps him. Um, but check me out at the Clever Investor Show. I got some great get yep. guests, and uh, you know I know people who listen to podcasts like to listen to other podcasts. For sure. Um, what, what's your favorite platform? What, what platform would you want people Dude, I'm to having a ton of fun with the podcasting right now. We post it on our YouTube channel. At, I'm at Clever Investor everywhere. Yeah. But uh, I just really enjoy this interaction. Yeah. I li like, like you, I like to interview really cool, interesting people and have these really uh, authentic conversations mm -hmm. that kind of take on a life of their own. I, yeah. I, I try not to like pre-think about like where I'm going to take it too, too much. Um, and so far, everybody's been fantastic. So I've had I'm, awesome people I'm, on. I'm digging the, the the podcasting. Favorite pod so far of every of all the people. Ooh, you've done. that's a tough one because the 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 one that's doing the best is the Robert Kiyosaki one that I just posted. My probably personal favorite. I loved the Vina Jetty one mm. because she is such a badass and she broke down multifamily in a way that's so easy to understand. And dude, she she's one of my favorite. She's my, one of my mentors in multifamily. She, this lady's done 900 million in multifamily. She is such a gangster. Wow. Um, but the one that probably pumps you up the most is the Wes Watson one. Mm. Wes Watson is just a fucking animal. I got to watch that one. Oh, you got to watch. I got to get him on your podcast. I would love it that. would light your podcast up. Your audience would love it because he's really? just, he's so good at transferring his powerful energy and the words he says just string together like a fucking street <laughs> poet. Wow. He's a street yeah. poet, dude. I've, yeah. I got to listen to that Come one. Come out of, of prison yours. for 10 yeah. years, just jacked mm -hmm. you know i i said his phrase earlier ripped rich and rare i love that it's shit like yeah. that that he just like rattles off and you're like wait what was that let me write that down uh-huh yeah. yeah it reminds me of chappy P peter i had oh, him on yeah no, very similar very similar yeah. yeah i'm sure wes is awesome i'll have to listen to him and i'd love to have him on the show yeah i'll connect and you. uh that'd be awesome dude well i really appreciate you brother so obviously they can find you anywhere at clever investor 
And uh, any final thoughts as we, no, as thank we wrap you, dude. up here? I'm proud of you, bro. Keep it up. I It'll be cool that. to check back in a year from now and uh, re-watch this podcast to see how it plays out and also see just where you take this business because I think this is nothing compared to what you're about to do over the next few years. So it means the world keep it me. up. Let's go. Hey, it means the world to me, bro. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for being on. Cool. Yeah. Um, hey, if you're still watching, it would mean the world, like Cody said, to leave a five-star review if you're listening. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, obviously subscribe, like the video, comment down below, uh, and we'll you know probably get Cody on in the future. Maybe Cody will let me come on his show eventually. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, just really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one.